Rovers return. No, this is not pickups plastics. This is the Rovers return. <laughs> I don't care what number you thought you dialed, love. You dialed this number. Rovers return. 2271. Pickups plastics is 2217. And I am fed up with folk ringing me instead of pickup plastics. The only thing plastic about me, love, are me bra cups. All right. Phew. And the same to you in knobs on. And why didn't you answer the phone? I see. Another jolly day in prospect. How long have you been sitting there? Well, you weren't in bed when I woke up at six o'clock this morning. Look, love, I know you're worried. I am not worried. Nothing to worry about. You see, you can speak. You must know I'm just bloody angry. Yes, love. Not to mention hurt. I know, love. And you saying yes, love, I know, love, like you're reassuring a child with chicken pox doesn't help. No, love. All right. All right what? I believe you. You don't believe me at all. I do. You don't. Nobody does. Oh, for God's sake. I'm surprised you don't give me the third degree. Grill me. That's what you like to do, isn't it, eh? You, the police, everybody. Have you flipped or what? Look, I was mugged, Bet. It's not an insurance fiddle. I'm not that bummed. After trying to pull a stunt like that, I might be quick on my feet, but I'm not a fool. Look, Alec, I'm sorry if I had my doubts at first, which I did, but I haven't now. I really believe you. I'd swear on a Bible. Have we got one? What? A Bible. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Alec. Now, I believe you were mugged. Will that do you? Well, you're the only one who does. The rest of the inhabitants of the Northern Hemisphere still think I'm a liar. Well, that detective hasn't been back, has he? He must be convinced you were mugged. Maybe. Lo love. Let's try and, well, not forget. Because you can't forget about being knocked about and losing over 2,000 quid. But let's try and relegate it to the back of our minds. And just try and lead a normal life again, okay? Okay, Alec. Okay. Good. Why don't you nip back to bed for an hour, love? I wouldn't mind a bit of breakfast, actually. A couple of rashes of bacon. You're on. And a sausage? Mm -hmm. Thought we had a beehive in the house. Mm -hmm. You, woman. Ah, now it comes with peace of mind, serenity of the spirit. I wouldn't know. Today we'll see the end of it, love, I'm sure. How can you be sure when he's expecting front page headlines in the recorder, not a, a scratchy little paragraph inside? Yeah, it's still an apology, though, isn't it? And par for the course. I mean, have you ever seen an apology in screaming big headlines? No, neither have I. Mike Baldwin is still expecting it, Ken. Yeah, well, what he expects and what he gets are two different things. Now, I've apologised to him personally for... Um, for libeling him. For printing incorrect information about Baldwin's curtains. And today, I shall apologise publicly in the paper. Now, that is it. He can go hang from now on. See you lunchtime. Right. Morning. Sorry I'm late. Bring the paper. That's why I'm late. She was late delivering it. Records a girl. Oh, let's have a look. So. <laughs> well, there's nothing in it. Oh, so that's his little game, is it? Two paragraphs and he calls that an apology. What's this? Here, look, down at the bottom. Well, he's picked the wrong bloke to play games with. Haven't you gone yet? Well, if I had, you'd be looking at a ghost, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's not funny, Jimmy. You promised me you'd be around that job centre first thing this morning. And what's more, you promised Kevin. 
It was all for turfing you out last night, you know. You can't turf a ward of court out. You're not a ward of court. Well, what am I then? It was the court what said I had to live here with you. Yeah, because nobody else had have you. Though God knows I must have been mad for offering. What have you got behind your back? Nothing. You won't let me have a look. It's only a piece of toast. You've just got up, haven't you? No, I haven't. This you is a have. mid morning snack. You've just got up. I haven't. You have. Anyway, what are you doing home so soon, eh? Snooping on me, are you? Yeah, that's right, because something told me you would have slopped back off to bed. I remember how fond of bed you were when we were at home. I was very tired. Anyway, I've had a very emotionally exhausting time recently. Aww, and whose fault has that been? Yours. Now get up and get yourself dressed and get down to that job centre, and I'm going to stand here until you do. You know you're turning into a right old woman, you are, Sal. You know, you'd make anybody all before the time you would. Now, are you ready? Yes! Right, well, on your bike then. You want a piece of my toast? No, I don't. Would you believe? They don't know where Marjorie Smith is in Corfu. I mean, how anybody can loll about in the sun for three weeks. I could, given half a chance. Still, knowing Marjorie, she's probably got herself six Greek waiters by now. What are you chasing after Marjorie Smith for? Well, she can confirm that part of the money I had, Nick, was fees owing to be artist, can't she? I mean, at least it's some proof I'm telling the truth. Alec, you are telling the truth. Now, I thought we decided that once and for all. You're getting... what's the word for it? Paranoid. That's it. Paranoid. Yeah, I am, aren't I? Well, stop it and try and think of something nice instead, like sausage and mash. Yes, Dr. Freud. I mean it. I'll try. Oh, that looks very Moorish, Betty. Yeah, well, it should do. Best been staking there, you know. Hey, well, do us a favour, will you? What's that? Don't give it to me. Oh, I still want it at all. <laughs> you know what Vera's cooking motto is, don't you, Betty? No. BBE, boil the beggar and egg. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, Bet. Any news of Phantom Mugger yet? No, there isn't, Vera. Do you know they're taking a long time out? The idle police, you know, they spend so much time in them panda cars, don't they? Yes, it is taking a long time, Vera. But that does not make him a phantom mugger. He were a 100% real life mugger. And I'd be obliged if you'd stop shouting your mouth off about it. We're trying to put it out of our minds, all right? Sorry, I'm sure. Good. Obviously, there is such a subject. Well, you know why, don't you? And the same goes for you and Gloria, too, Betty. Alex's nasty experience is no longer a topic of conversation in this pub. It's banned, like politics and religion. Oh, look, I'd better be going, you know. I should have been at the job centre an hour ago. Hey, what's uh, an hour in your young life? Get another orange down. Here. Oh, no, I can't. Go on, get a stick of sherry in it for you. Oh, well, you've twisted me. Right, this one. Oh, thanks. Well, oh, cheers. Cheers. What's it done? Oh, we're not stopping in here, are we? Look, love, we can't cower behind locked doors while the storm passes. That's if there's going to be a storm, which I very much doubt. There is no point in asking for trouble by coming in here, where he's very likely to turn up. The day has not yet dawned, and I can't come in here for a drink in case I meet Bolden, and it never will. Hello. Oh, hello, Hi, Emily. Emily. What are you drinking? Oh, just a pineapple oh. juice, dear. I'm uh, here for the plate meat pie, actually. <laughs> it certainly smells delicious. Right, uh, pineapple juice, please, Gloria, and I think it's three plate meat pies as well. Yes, please. I'm not hungry, Ken. Oh, well, see how you feel when it arrives. Mm, I guarantee you'll find it irresistible. Um, Baldwin's around as usual, Oh, yes. Has he said anything about... Uh, the apology? No, not a word. You must have seen it, though. Well, there have been enough copies of the recorder lying about the place. Hey, uh, Ken, I see you didn't give Baldwin his headlines, then. Uh, no. no. Very disappointed. Mm. <laughs> you see what I mean? I mean, if Vera's read it, then Mr Baldwin most certainly must have, because her newspaper reading's usually restricted to the front page of the sun. Then why hasn't he gone berserk? Because he decided to let sleeping dogs lie. Afternoon, my dear. Hello, it's, uh, it's Mr. Newton from the brewery, isn't it? Yeah. Thanks, uh, Hello, Ben. What brings you out from the boardroom? I've come to see Alec, to see how he's doing after his very nasty experience. He's in the back. You better come through. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Newton. How do you do? Hi, up. Here comes trouble. You can say that again. 
Look who's come to see you, Alec. Cecil, Alec, how are you feeling? Fine. Father, glad to hear it. After all you've been through. Oh, it wasn't that bad, Cecil. Really? When I first heard, I said to myself, if I know Alec, I bet he didn't give up 2,000 quid or more without a scrap. Well, I, I didn't have much chance. You know, he uh, hit me from behind. Still, 2,000 pounds. It's a lot of money. Uh, 2,334, actually. I know. I must admit, I found it hard to believe when I saw the figure in the paper. Did you now? I have to be honest. I did. I thought, what is this? Some sort of tall story competition? <laughs> Is no, but she's supposed to be at the job centre, you know, maybe even get a job. I went, Kev, honest I did, but it was full. Full? Job centre full? Yeah, I was surprised as well. I said to Martin how surprised I was, didn't I? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> but I'm going again after lunch, Kev, honestly, I'm answer. Yeah, well, just make sure you do. Yeah. You want a drink, mate? No, thanks. Kev, what? you won't tell Sally you saw me in here, will you, please? You know how old TT she goes about everything, please? I'll be your bestest friend forever and ever and ever, please. Not Kev, you know, twisted I... round my little finger I have. Really, everybody. Well, that was very, very good. You've been going off pub grub recently. You'll say it's the same as if it's all been cooked in one big microwave, but that was exceptional. Right, now, what about another drink? Well, isn't it time we were going? No, we've got time for one more. Emily? Uh, not for me, thank you. Tell me. Right, well, we've got to have the other half of it. You are jumpy, aren't you, dear? I just don't see the point in asking for... Thank you, Beth. My pleasure. And good health, Alec. Cheers, Cess. Well, I'd best get back to the bar. A landlady's work is never done. Not if she's a good landlady, it isn't. Well, Alec, I'm very glad there wasn't any serious damage on her. Physically, I mean. Thank you, Cess. A very unpleasant business. Very. Especially for me. And there's such a lot of it about. Mugging, robbing, rape, mindless violence. You know, Alec, I'm fast coming to the conclusion folk can't handle too much prosperity. It makes them greedy, hard, yobbish. As my father used to say, you don't see many fat folk in a famine. No, you don't, Cess. I take it you were in short. Definitely. Well, that's something. I don't suppose the police have got anybody. Well, not as yet, no. Overworked? Eh? The police. Oh, yes. i tell you something. What? You were the main item of conversation around the brewery. Now, that's a fact. Oh? Especially when folk read the sum involved. Look, it wasn't all pub takings, I keep telling you. They said old Alec must have had an exceptionally good weekend to take that much. I did have an exceptional weekend. Unless... What? He's uh, bumping up the figures a bit. You know, for insurance purposes. Wink, wink. <laughs> I'm only reporting what people were saying, Alec. Uh -huh. You weren't one of them, I suppose, Seth. As if. Uh. But that's not all they were saying, either. You do surprise me. I mean, this is really ridiculous. I put one or two people straight when I heard, I can tell you. Yeah. And what else were people saying, Seth? You must have been shopping at the supermarket for your spirits and mixers and that. Because judging from what you've been buying from us, they'd have had to nearly drink the place dry for you to take that much in the weekend. Look, I keep telling you it wasn't all pub takings. I'm only reporting what people were saying, Alec. Don't get offended. And what were you saying, Cess, amongst all this hubbub? Me? I was defending you, of course. If Alec said he took that much, then he took that much, I said. 
And I can't see how the... You're right, pushing a trolley around the cash and carry, I said. I was right, of course, Alec. Of course you were bloody right. Just asking, Alec. You know how we frown on extramural shopping? Just wondering if you'd supped up the pair of you? I was just going, as a matter of fact, Bet. Doesn't look bad for a mugging victim, does he? He doesn't. I was just telling him how everybody at the brewery were asking after him. Oh, were they? Isn't that nice, Alec? Wonderful. Don't go overdoing it, Alec. Take it easy till you get over the shock. That's an order. Uh, see that he does, Bet. You can depend on it. Cheerio, Alec. Cheerio, Sess. I'll be in touch. Oh, I nearly forgot. Jack Roper. Uh, at the Bull's Head. He was asking after you this morning. Ask me to remember him to you. <laughs> Do you know what he said? <laughs> I'm sure you'll tell me. He said, I bet you didn't know Alec Gilroy were doing that well. How much will you be putting his rent up? <laughs> you know, Jack, blunt as a brick. I'll see you out. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. Mr. Newton. Cheerio. <laughs> what are you two looking at? Well, nothing. Good. What do you think happened? Well, whatever it was, it's upset Beth. What did he sell off? Well, put the rent up. You heard him say it. No, he didn't say that exactly. Of course he did. All that Jack Roper business is just sign language for what he's thinking himself. Did he mention anything else? Such as? Well, you know. Well, he didn't say I was a 24 carat liar, no. Hey, well, no, that's good. But he hinted it. The hints were that flaming heavy, he practically ruptured himself. Now where are you going? Would have found a bobby. A bobby? Yes, and confess to being Jack the Ripper, because the way things are going, I've no doubt he'd believe it. Don't forget, Kev. Yeah, you don't forget either. Look, I'd better be going as well. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I had. It's all you keep saying. <laughs> yeah, I do, don't I? <laughs> Ken. I don't know, Ken. I've got a meeting this afternoon. Oh, yes, sorry. See, what did I tell you? He's obviously just letting it rest. Certainly seems like it. Oh, oh, let's ready. get on. Uh, <clears throat> I'm disappointed in you, Ken, by the way. Oh, why's that? Well, I've been sitting over there expecting you and him to have another bus stop. You've, You've let me down. Come on, Vera. See you, Mr. Baldwin. I read your paper this morning. Oh? No apologies. It was there. Not on the front page, it wasn't. Page two. Does anyone ever read as far as page two in that rag of yours? I doubt it very much. As far as I'm concerned, there's no apology. We're back to square one. You'll be hearing from my solicitor. No point in making a scene in here. That's what he'd love you to do, Ken. Come on. Hiya. Hiya. You missed me, Ken. Have you made us at me today? That one. I've got a vegetarian massage for you, too, okay? Mm, yeah. You don't sound very enthusiastic. I'm just not that hungry, that's all. You're not feeling well or something? A yeah, uh, couple of Betty Turpins, plate meat pie at lunchtime. Absolutely scrumptious it were. Oh, she's a menace, is that woman? Yeah. yeah. See, that's meant we'll live with her, be a toy boy. And after that, plate meat pie. Ooh. Yeah, well, don't let me stop you, Ken. Uh, where's Georgina? Uh, absolutely no idea. Perhaps a wonderful miracle has happened, and she's got herself a job somewhere. Mm. Want to bank on it? You know something, don't you? Mm. Mm, she was in the pub all lunch time with Platty. What you mean she's not been down to that job centre? Well, she said she went, but she said it was full. 
It was full. Yeah, now take it easy. Can't stand the sight of blood, especially at meal times. Hiya, sister and brother-in-law. Mm, what's that smell? Oh, what's up? Has my nose turned into a carrot or something? <laughs> The job centre was full, was it? Oh, you rotten telltale, Kevin. Was Webster. it? Well, no, but there was nothing suitable. Suitable? I would have thought anything was suitable in your predicament, Stony Bro. You can shut up, you can. Don't no. talk to Kev like that. Well, I thought he was my mate. Do you know, that's your trouble. You just think you can waltz through life, don't you? Turning on the dazzle where necessary. Well, you can't. Because the same rules apply to you as do the rest of us, and one of them is earning a living. Now, either you get yourself down to that job centre tomorrow and get yourself a job, any job, or I'm going to report you to your probation officer and you're going to end up in a detention centre like she's warned you. It's not funny, Gina. Who's laughing? It's me. Sorry I'm late. Phone kept dragging me back. Did we? What's the matter? You've been crying? No. Well, what's the matter? Nothing. Oh, come on. Something certainly is. Oh, I'm, I'm just browned off with this. This whole might business. It's hanging over us like a big black cloud. Everybody's talking about it and about us. It's just getting to me, Ken. Well, don't let it. How can I not let it? It's there, morning, noon and night, just across the street, in the paper, in the pub. No, no. I've done everything I can to settle things with Baldy. He just keeps chucking things back in my face. So I'm in a position now, the only thing I can do is say, well, go ahead, do your worst. And what is his worst? Just think about it. He can only sue me for a minor libel. He's only likely to get nominal damages. Yeah, but you're not sure. I'm pretty sure. It's not just about damages, is it? It's about washing your dirty linen in public. I mean, nobody comes out of these cases snowy white, do they? No, but he's got more to hide than I have, hasn't he? A shifty little weasel like that. What about me? Well, why should you be dragged into it? This is between me and Boulder and nobody else. Yeah, but supposing I am dragged into it. Supposing he drags me into it. Now, come on, now. I think you're letting your imagination run riot, I really do. Now, come on, sit down for a minute. I'll get the tea. Don't worry. Hey, interesting. <sighs> Nothing from Baldwin's solicitor, if that's what you mean. You really are spoiling for a fight, aren't you, Ken? I am. Oh, come on. I mean, there's nothing I'd like better than him to accept my apology and forget the whole business. But if he's not just going to let it rest there, well, I'm certainly not going to take it lying down. Yeah, but if he does decide to go ahead, he's got an open and shut case, hasn't he? Yeah, but at what cost to himself? I mean, do you think he's going to be so keen to take it to court if he knows I'm going to give him a fight, drag his name through the mud, let the world see what a vengeful little toad he is? Because that's what'll happen. I'll see to that. Whatever damage he thinks my article might have done to him will be nothing compared to the damage he'll do to himself if he brings this business out in the open. So where do we go from here, then? Well, it's up to Baldwin, isn't it? Bye. All right, that's fixed. I'm nipping to work for an hour to help with a rush, and then I'm going to take a couple of hours off. Oh, yeah, well, if you ask me, you're still wasting your time. Kev, just leave it to me, all right? Hiya! Hiya! What's wrong with you? Couldn't you sleep or something? There's a great big beautiful world out there, Kev. So who wants to spend half the day in bed? Yeah, and half the folk living in it are working for a living. Me for one and Sal for another. All right, I take your point. I'm doing my best, aren't I? Look, Gina, I've been to see Mr Roberts and I'm going to take a couple of hours off this morning. What for? Well, so I can go to the job centre. Ah, that's a good idea, Sal. You're wasted behind that shop counter. I've always said that. I can go to the job centre with you. Look, Sal, I told you I've been. There's nothing doing. Yeah, and I don't believe you. So this morning, I'm coming with you. Come and get it, girls. Oh, oh. tar, Betty. Yeah. 
Oh, that not coming through then? No, she'll have her hands full in the back there. You stop it now, it'll blow on the fuse. <laughs> well, I thought he was beginning to calm down. Well, he was. Nearly back to normal yesterday. Give me a dog's life. <laughs> Does Cecil Newton judge his face? Also, Brewery don't believe him either then. Well, they believe the muggy. Yeah, they're just not too happy about how much he said he lost you. Oh. oh, don't mind me, I'm sure. Carry on. Might just learn something to my advantage. Well, I think I'd best get on. Yes, I think you're better. All of you. Well, you've got jobs to get on with. Ah, come on, Alec. I mean, if you think we were talking about you. I know you were talking about me, Betty. The whole flaming world's talking about me. Well, I can't do much about the rest of the world because I don't pay their wages. But I can do something about you lot. And I'll not have you talking about me behind me back in time that I'm paying for. Got it? Yes, Alec. What the heck's going on through here? I get it. And what do you do for an encore, Betty? Go around poking wasps' nests with a stick? I'll take this. Do you know, I sometimes wonder why I put up with this lot. I mean, I really do. I told you it's a waste of time. No, it isn't, Gina. Shut up. Start looking. Oh, look there, a filling station attendant. Filling station attendant? Yeah, that'd oh, be no. great. Now write that down, Gina. We'll just see if there's anything else, and then we can go in. Oh, no. I'm not doing no filling station attendant. Look, Sal, if you're not going to be serious, I'm going home. No, you're not. Now, if you don't fancy that, have a look for something that you do fancy. Oh, look, general office work. Age 17 to 20, no previous experience required. As full training will be given. Must have a bright and pleasing personality. That was lovely. Oh, thank you. Hi. Hello. You on your own as well, are you? Well, I was hoping to catch Mavis, but she seems to have got held up. Um, half a lager, please, right. Gloria. Emily? No, not for me, thanks. I might as well get off home for half an hour. How are uh, things over the road? Mike, you mean? Yeah, has he said any more about taking Ken to court? Not to me. <coughs> I just wondered if he might be having second thoughts. No, I didn't think he could. Not without losing face. Not now everybody knows about it. If only Ken had put his apology on the front of page. If only Ken had not got his teeth into the story in the first place. If only Curly hadn't written his piece for college. If only, if only. How's Ken taking it? Oh, I can't wait to get to grips with Mike. If it comes to it. If it comes to it? Yeah, well, Ken reckons Mike won't go ahead with it because there'll be that much mudslinging it'll cause more bother than the original story. Well, you just tell Ken from me that as far as I can see, that is definitely not the way Mr. Baldwin sees it. Look, I, I'd better get back. If Mavis does show herself, perhaps you could tell her I'll be at home till about half past one. Yeah, of course, I'll Yes, thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, I reckon Ken's all over in the right. How can he be right, Mavis? You can't go around saying things about folk. That's not true. Yeah, but it was true, wasn't it? Well, most of it, any road. All that about what a sweatshop place is, and there's no proper facilities. Amenities. Well, that I know. That's not what Baldwin's taking him to court for, though, is it? It's because he reckons that you were flogging seconds in with his good stuff. <laughs> well, I won't put that past him, either. Well, me neck, you've changed your tune, haven't you? Not so long since you reckon that Baldwin went as bad as he were being painted. <laughs> I wouldn't tell him that, though, would I? We found him taking out on our terry. That's what you call being diplomatic. I don't know, is that a fact? Where I come from, it's what's known as being two faced. Cheer up, cock. Punches will be thinking it's tail. Is it that obvious? Well, let's just say it's obvious you've not come up on pools. Have you got your rip from Baldwin yet? No, not yet. Do you know, I think that's the worst part of it, not knowing if he's going ahead or not. Well, I'd like to offer you a word of comfort, a chink of hope. But it's not easy, not when you're dealing with the fella whose childhood passion was pulling the legs off spiders. Bet, phone will be. They asked for Alec, but I said he wasn't here, so they asked for you. Didn't tell you who it was, though. OK, done. Thanks, love. Bet, Gilroy. Police. No, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what time he'll be back. Sometime this afternoon. That's all he said. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him to get in touch as soon as he gets in. Um, is it to do with the mugging? Look, can't you tell me anything? I mean, I am his wife. I see. Yes, I'll tell him. Thanks for ringing. Bye. 
Give us a scotch, please, love. Large one? Yeah, why not? Match my expensive mood. Can I get you one? Ah, uh, no, thanks, sir. <laughs> fine. I take it you've had a good morning. Can't complain. Listen, Mike, mm -hmm. I want to talk to you. Oh? This business between you and Ken. Yeah, you sure I can't get you one? Ah, uh, positive, thanks. Right. Cheers. Cheers. You were saying? This business between you and Ken. You're not really going ahead with it, are you? This libel case against him. Look, he printed blatant lies about me in that rag it was, right? Lies have cost me a lot of work. I gave him the opportunity to apologise. He threw it back in my face. Now, what am I supposed to do? I see. Do you? I see that you're out to crucify us, no matter what. And in that case, there's not much point discussing it, is there? Oh, come on. Did I say that? Well, what are you saying, then? I'm saying that I think I'm a reasonable man. If you've got anything to say on the subject, I'm prepared to listen. There's a table over there. Yeah, not here, though, and uh, I haven't got that much time, anyway. Where, then? Uh, why don't you come to my place tonight? Um, I, I can't tonight, Mike. I've got a council meeting. That's no problem. I'm not going anywhere. Come when it's finished. Look, I don't think it's a good idea. All right, suit yourself. It's my best offer. If you want to talk to me, you know where I'll be, don't you? Betty! Could I have a cheese and pickle sandwich, please? On brown, love. No quiet. Hey, no, we couldn't handle the off. Betty's run off with that pie man again. Gloria's gone to Italy for a fortnight on a tip she got from Baldwin. <laughs> Chance will be a fine thing. Oh, and there was a phone call for you, love. Mm, not Cecil Newton again. No, the police. Police? What do they want? Well, they didn't say. They just asked me to get you to call round when you come back. Call round? Well, that's what they said. Well, better go, I suppose. Let them do their worst. Alec, have you thought for just one minute it might be good news? They might have got your money back. What would I look? You must be joking, of course. The way the dice are stacked against me right now, I'm just grateful they've abolished hanging. Why do you always knock her? Why can't you just give her a chance and a word of encouragement? Sure, you know, Jane, it doesn't strike me as being one of life's grafters. It didn't interfere with the social life. Oh, she'd be all right. She could just find the right job. Oh, yeah. Which, in her case, is uh, a air hostess or um, a model. Wouldn't it be smashing if she got fixed up and gone off somewhere celebrating? Oh, if she has got fixed up with a job, she won't be the only one celebrating, I can tell you. Right. Jean has not been in, has she? Well, I've not seen her. Oh, oh um, Bet you've got a visitor. Gloria! <laughs> Evening, Mr Newton. How nice to see you again. And so soon. To what do we owe the honour? Is he in, Bet? I would like a quick word. Look, if he was a bit short with you yesterday, he has been under a lot of pressure, you know. Ah, yes, pressure. I quite understand. In fact, that's the reason I'm here now. Pressure from the board. Oh. Yes, I had a meeting with them after I left Alec. At their request, of course, I told them exactly what he told me, but... Well, you see, there are still one or two loose ends they'd like to see tied up. I see. Look, Alec and I have been sparring partners for longer than I care to remember. We understand each other, but that, unfortunately, is not enough for the board. I explained to them exactly what Alec said to me, but, as I say, it does still beg one or two questions. So, if I could just have a quick word... I'm sure Alec would be delighted. Ah. Unfortunately, he's not in. He had to go out about an hour ago, and I don't know when he'll be back. I see. Well, in that case... You'll call tomorrow. I'll tell him you've called. I'll wait. If you were thinking of offering me some form of light refreshment, a drop of malt would not go amiss. Excuse me a moment. It's not like you to come in for a drink after work. You're going to get your knuckles out good and proper, you know. Not say on the table, hardly any time away. What's up, on him on over there? If you must know, Vera, Don's working till eight now. Do you want a drink or don't you? Yes, bottle of light. Two bottles of light, please, Gloria. Oh, Charlie. I don't half need that just now. Now what, so Nothing's up, as you put it. Everything's fine. In fact, it couldn't be better. Do you recognise this? 
Well, it's your briefcase, isn't it? Yes, the one I was taking to the bank. Have you got your money back? Well, no, I mean, that was too much to hope for. But I, what I have got is undeniable proof I was telling the truth. I can't wait to phone that old so-and-so Cecil Newton. You won't have oh. to. Well, oh. Yes, I didn't see you there. Never mind that, Alec. I take it you've got some good news. Uh, the best I could have hoped for. Sure, to get my money back, that is, of course. The police have found my briefcase. The money had gone, of course. But the paying in books hadn't. There you are. Two paying in books, two separate accounts. One Rover's return and the other's my club artist's account. Now, you'll see, I was, if you check them, I, I was going to make two payments, one into each. And if you add them up, you'll see it comes to the same figure I told the police was missing. So I hope everyone is satisfied now. I never doubted you for a moment, Alec, but I am answerable to the other members of the board. You do understand that. Oh, perfectly, says, yes. I never doubted for one minute that you thought any less of me than I would of you under similar circumstances. <laughs> well, it could have been worse. <laughs> Much worse. Good to have an early night for a change. Yeah. Fancy a drink? Ah, uh, no, I don't think I will, thanks. I'd better get back. I promised Ken I wouldn't be late. Come on, then I'll drop you at Rosmond Street. Look, thanks all the same, but I think I'd rather walk. I've, uh, I've got a bit of a thick head. Reckon a bit of fresh air would do me good. Well, if you're sure. Yeah, thanks all the same. See ya. Good night. Good night. Glad you could make it. Come in. Well, I nearly didn't believe me if I hadn't been so desperate to talk. I know, I know, I know, but first things first. Come on. I'll uh, make us a drink. Um, this isn't exactly a social call, Mike. That doesn't stop us making ourselves comfortable, does it? Gin, tonic, no ice. And a slice of lemon, right? Right. Well, uh, sit down, then. I'll be in the back if you need me, Gloria. And if that big ginger air fella starts doing his Frank Sinatra again, tell him we haven't got a music license and show him the door. <laughs> Hey. Another half hour, and it will be the end of what's turned out to be an almost perfect day. That's not how you saw it this morning, though. This morning is history. This afternoon's history. What matters now is that I've been vindicated of whatever foul deeds folk thought me capable of getting up to. Not only have I wiped the smile off their simpering, doubting faces, I've rubbed their noses in it as well. It's <laughs> just one thing that got me in all this. Go on. I thought that it might have driven a wedge between us. There's no chance, love. If anything, I think this whole business has brought us even closer together. You do? Definitely. Especially as far as finance is concerned. Eh? Yeah. Well, you see, up until now, I had no idea how much cash you were banking on behalf of your club clients. I didn't realise just what a successful businessman you are. Now, now, look, Bet, if you think that I bank that sort of money every week... And I you know what they say, Alec? Behind every successful man, there's an even more successful woman. And they're right. And that's exactly where I'm going to be from now on. Right behind you. Especially when it comes to things like holidays abroad, expensive new outfits. Meals out. Oh, Alec, if you're going for another one of them, I think I'll have a gin and tonic. Large. I think we've both got just cause to celebrate, don't you, Tiger? 
nothing of the fact that I've been liable. Suffered a loss of work as a direct result of allegations your husband printed in that rag of his. Allegations that are totally untrue. I'm entitled to damages. A couple of days ago, you were happy to settle for an apology. Right. Well, Ken printed your apology. Yeah, but he didn't do what I wanted him to do. He still printed it. Yeah, but I wanted it on the front page. He stuck it inside because he thought he could put one over on me. Mike, what good is it going to do? It's only going to bring the whole business up again, drag it through the courts. If you think Ken's piece created a stink, that is nothing to what's going to come out in court, believe me. Because if you think he's going to give up without a fight, you're very much mistaken. He can kick and scream as much as he likes. I am still the one with right on my side. God, there are times when I could get hold of the pair of you and crack your heads together. You're both prepared to go to court over a, a piddling point of principle, even if it means ruin. <laughs> well, it won't ruin me. I can promise you that. Well, it won't do your reputation much good, that's for sure. And it could certainly ruin us. If we get lumbered with a, a damages claim, legal costs, we're finished. Everything we've worked for, gone. And we're fully stretched as it is. Oh, come on. I don't want to see you out in the streets. I just want to teach that pig-stubborn husband of yours a short, sharp lesson he won't forget in a hurry. Ah. Now we're getting to it. That's more like it. All this has got nothing to do with your... Precious business, your damaged reputation. It's just a 24-carat opportunity to get back at Ken, isn't it? Well, what about Ken getting at me, then, when he raked up all this muck in the first place? He was following up a story. And didn't he enjoy it? I wonder if he'd been so hysterical if it was anyone except Mike Baldwin he was up against. And you don't have to answer that, because we all know the answer to that. It wasn't we? like that. Oh, come on. You know as well as I do, he hates my gut. He hates me because of, well, what you and me hate going. That's all in the past. Not as far as Ken is concerned, it's not. I've blighted his life for years. I mean, he hates me. He hates me for marrying his daughter. He'll never forgive me for that, ever. I had hoped I could talk a bit of sense into you. Head you off before you go plunging over the cliff, taking the rest of us with you. Seems I was wrong. With a lost cause right from the start. It will be if you go now. Look, Mark, You I... came here to try and persuade me to change my mind, right? Right. So, start persuading. But why should they accept the standards when they are blind? Uh, Hiya! 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 So you've decided to come home, have you? Well, I've not kept you up, have I? Where's Kevin? He's just gone down to the rovers with Brian. Oh, you two haven't had a row, have you? No, have we, heck? I just didn't want to go, that's all. I've just got a headache. Anyway, where have you been? I was expecting you at tea time. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry about that, Sal. Only I met a couple of my mates down at the burger bar. And then Pudding Eddie came in, so we all went to the pictures. OK. Do you fancy a broth? Hey, hang on a minute, Gina. Come here. What happened about them jobs you went after? I told you it's a waste of time. You did go. Oh, well, yeah. Well, a couple of them. Well, actually, I saw someone at the cowboy box factory. Head of personnel, she called herself. Straight skirt and a straight face to match, right? Snooty bitch she well, was. Well, what happened? Well, they got me adding up all these figures, didn't they? And as you know, Sal, I was never very good at figures anyway. I didn't fancy it. Pokey little office with sweaty little typists everywhere. So you're no further now than you were this morning, then, are you? Oh, you'll be proud of me one of these days, Sal, while I'm winging my way across the Atlantic and sailing the seven seas in my stewardess's uniform. I'll make you proud of me one day, Sal. Honest, I will. Sal, do you want to see a bacon butter? No, I don't. Oh, I'll make myself one, then. I hope you've enjoyed your little game. Oh, come on, sit down. You haven't heard my answer yet. Oh, come on, Mike. I've been wasting my time and I've been wasting yours. Well, you definitely haven't wasted mine. In fact, I can't remember an evening I've enjoyed so much. Yeah, I can believe that, I know. You had no intention of changing your mind, did you? In your own petty little way, you got what you wanted the minute I walked through that door. Just snap your fingers, here comes Deirdre. I bet you got quite a kick out of it. Now, hang on a minute. It was you that wanted to see me, remember? That was when I was foolish enough to think you still might have had a shred of common decency in you. I came round here because I thought you might be prepared to listen to reason. And I have. 
Okay. You win. Hey? You've talked me out of it. You mean you won't sue, Ken? If that's what you want. Well, you certainly made me fight every inch of the way for that, didn't you? Well, I had to, didn't I? If I'd have told you an hour ago, you still wouldn't be here, would you? You rat. You'll never change, will you? Oh, I sincerely hope not. Right then, now that the business is over, we can relax. God, you're joking. Have you seen the time? Oh, come on. Have another drink. I mean, what difference will another ten minutes make, eh? Oh, all right then. Just one. Right. Ty, I had it. Now, where the heck? Did they bring it in here? Sorry, love. Ty, grey one with diagonal stripes. Oh, sorry, I didn't notice. Oh, it doesn't matter. What matters is my brain, which is on the point of expiring. The bathroom? Ah, good point indeed. Go and look in the bathroom, Kenneth. See, if I had anything up there, I'd have thought of that myself. Okay, love. It's Baldwin, isn't it? Well, don't let him get to you. As far as I'm concerned, he's out of sight, out of mind. He can play stupid games as long as he wants, but if he thinks he's got me on hot coals, he's an idiot. Yeah, OK, Ken, I'm not Baldwin, OK? All right, love, just as long as you don't worry, because that's what he wants. He thinks that writ of his is hanging over us like the sword of what's-his-name. I couldn't care less, and nor should you. No, it's, uh, it's not that, Ken. Good, good. Well, what is it then? Housing, planning? No. You were late back last night. Tough meeting. Pretty, yeah. Want to talk about it? No, I don't think so. Right. Well, just as long as it isn't Baldwin. Because if it is, I'll have it straight out with him. Is he suing, is he not? And if he's not, he can get off my back and stop playing his stupid game. No, don't do that, Ken, please. Well, it's all right, just for you, love. That's all. I mean, I'm OK. He's not getting to me. I know, but just don't do anything to antagonise him, please. I'm sure it's not him. I'm sure. Good girl. Now, where the heck is that? She spares me flipping that. She just bugs me, Sal. All right, Kevin. Well, she should shift the backside. Come on, the walk, Nikki. Things will be different when she gets a job. Well, when she gets a job. She will. I'll see to it. I promise you. What else can you do? You've been to the job centre with her. Well, I'll nag her until she does get a job. She'll get fed up before I do, believe me. Well, we should help out a bit more. I mean, how many times has she helped clean up? How many times has she helped get tea? Once. Yeah. And did you see this state on her spuds when she finished with it? Half the potato ended up in the bin. Kevin, tell her, I not me. I tried telling her. It's all a big joke to her, isn't it? She goes on about how macho I'm being and how she likes macho men. Oh, well, everybody knows you're not. Eh? Don't worry, Kev. I'm not so mad on the strong, silent types. Give me a weak little whinger any day. Oh. Hi. Hey, get you. I thought you were going to work. I am. So what's with the shirt and tie then? Well, as the senior executive in the company, one must keep up appearances. Oh. Right. So, shall I see you in the Rovers at dinner time? Uh, well, I'm not sure, love. I'm a bit busy today. Uh, I mean, it's possible, but you know. You just anyway. might not be able to stomach a hot pot. Somewhat like that, yeah. Well, how about somewhere else then? I mean, there's a universe out there. The world doesn't stop at the viaduct. Yeah, but like I say, you know... Hey, take it to the wine bar for an executive dinner. Lunch, sorry. Wine bar? A glass of plonk and a vegetarian quiche? I'd rather have hot pot. He puts hairs on your chest, but he's hot pot, you know. Oh, that wouldn't surprise me. So do I take it the executive diary's full? Pretty full, yes. All I can say is I'll be vaguely in the area during the morning, and if I can, uh, if I can drop in, I will. But uh, like I say, I think I'm... Uh, Out to lunch. Busy. Well, if you can, it'd be nice to see you. And you look. Hey, Dad, when you say vaguely in the area, where's that exactly? It's Aswell Street. Oh, good. You can drop me off this girl then. Thank you very much. She doesn't miss a thing, does she, eh? So, I take it you'll be back at tea time. Uh, well, I might be a bit late, love, so don't wait, eh? Very not to get in tea, eh? You keep your nose out of it, you. Well, I'll cook you some and keep it warm, whatever it is. You're an angel. What are you? Ah, oh, wait till you taste it before uh -huh. you say that. Uh -huh. Hey, go on, Rita. There's not like a warm to pot pot. Come on. <laughs> Post! Anyone about? Bring out your dead. Oh. 
Well, well, well. <laughs> Looks like the drinks are on you, Peter. Are you having chips, Joy? Oh, uh, greasier the better. <laughs> and two lots of greasy chips, please, please. That's what I like to you. Proper food. None of your flipping fats and lettuce and lord knows what. You see, Phyllis, we're on a high cholesterol, low life expectancy diet. Funny, we never used to have vegetarians when we were your old age, except for one out of Patrick Rock. He used to wear suede shoes. <laughs> chop, chop, Phyllis, with a rush on. Oh, rush, rush, rush. She rushes into us graves. No wonder she's looking for somebody younger. I'll get your chips. So there's a high world of high flying business then. What, we fill it on some sort of go slow? <laughs> yeah, because of my sandwich delivery idea. I mean, I only have to suggest that I'm thinking of flogging sandwiches around the office and the shutters go. Why? I think she sees it as some sort of threat. Threat? We call them your fever takes off. And that's why I need to take on extra help, but you try telling Phyllis that. She thinks if I get somebody younger in, it'll be the writing on the wall as far as she's concerned. Yeah, you're still going ahead with it, aren't you? I mean, you're not taking any notes of what Frosty or Phyllis thinks. What do you think? <laughs> Silly old bat. <laughs> anyway, had any joy finally kid to give you a hand? Well, I'm seeing a couple of girls this afternoon. Well, only girls? Why? Looking for a job? I was just wondering whether it's a case of person in the job description, but girl when it comes to who gets it. No, a man can do it if he applies and seems right. I mean, after all, I employed Martin, didn't I? I mean, I asked him if he wanted to come back, but he didn't. Well, 60 girls, I should. All them offices full of executives, and a pretty young sandwich girl should clean up. And what about women executives? What about them? Well, maybe they just fancy a young sandwich boy. No, she's not happy, Phyllis. Would you be stuck in here? Cooking fries and scraping grease off chip plates. I mean, she's usually happy. Maybe it's a personal life. Perhaps Percy Tugdin's found true love at Emily Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Hey. Hey, Hello. what are you doing here? Well, I'm allowed to eat, aren't I? Well, you said you'd be meeting me to in the Rovers. No, no, I said I might be busy. Get to the Rovers. She'll be waiting for you. I'm just coming for takeoff. You can spare half an hour to see Rita. Jenny, I can't even spare five minutes. Of course you can. Does she bully you like this, Joanne? I don't let her. You're very wise. Look, if, if you don't want me, Rita, and I told her you ate an ear, what's she going to think? That you're avoiding her? Well, don't tell her then. Oh, so you are avoiding her? You're not funny, you know, Jen. I've come in for a takeout, right? And I'm very busy. Great. Uh, Full of joys as usual. They're only a joke. Looks like a guilty conscience, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, anyone think he was avoiding her? <laughs> Maybe he is. But well, why would he? I don't know, uh, unless he's got someone else. Is that supposed to mean? What do you mean, Joanne? I'll just go and put a record on. Excuse us. <laughs> you might wonder, Betty, where that money comes from. Now, the truth is, there's a little man sat in our downstairs cupboard, minting it. Ha! What surprised me? Yeah, his name's Alec, incidentally. But what's more puzzling is, where does that money go to? Now, I think the little man comes in after dark and eats it. The little man takes it very swiftly to the bank. And what's the point of that? Oh, I could see a point of that. Of course, most people yeah. could, Betty. Because it sits in the bank making more money, and the little man still won't take his little wife away on holiday. You know, Betty, in spite of what my wife says, I am not Paul Getty, and the reason I've got a modest sum put by is because I don't rush off to Barbados every five minutes. Who said out about Barbados? Who did at breakfast? All I said was we could afford an autumn break, why don't we take one? Oh, yes, I mean, if I had the money, I'd be off like a shot. Whose side are you supposed to be on? Oh, yeah. uh, Good morning, Ken. Morning, morning. Did we been in? Uh, last night. Bye, eh, Ken. You came in like the cavalry there. Oh? Letting a little man out of a tight spot. Can I get you something while you're waiting, Ken? Uh, just a half, Alec, please. Half a bit of a can of bet, please. Uh, you'll excuse me, I've got some paperwork to attend to. <laughs> it's all right for you. I mean, people are coming in shop all day, aren't they? New faces, conversations. What do I get, eh, to talk to? Sewing machine days and building machine nights. <laughs> You've got your mates at the factory, Vera. Yeah, but you can't talk over there. Shouts all you can do. And all our Jack ever talks about is ale and pigeons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, I bet you and Kevin talk a lot, don't you, Sam? 
Oh, you must swap for a week, would you? Oh, you love it. How about yourself? Oh, I think a week with your jacket feel like nails down a blackboard. <laughs> oh, you're right. You know, that's just what it feels like. <laughs> Boy, hello, Brian, yeah. yeah. So you're playing the world tonight, so you? Yeah. yeah. It's all right for you and all. What is? Yeah. Well, everything. Job you enjoy. Yeah, well, I do as it happens. You know, it's funny you should say that. It never really occurred to me till yesterday. You know, yeah. until then, it was just a job. Yesterday? Well, yeah. Gail offered me my job, my job back in cafe and I didn't want it. So I must be happy where I am, must I? Well, listen, Gail's got a job for him then, has she? Oh, yeah, it seems like it. Cheers. She's starting this uh, bus in hand up or something. Hey, Alf Roberts won't be too tough though, will he? I can see his <laughs> bussy sails <laughs> slumping. <laughs> hey, well, it serves him right. Do you know, a little bit of tomato and a lettuce leaf. That's what I had yesterday. It's supposed to be a salad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm too busy, Gloria. Though Baldwin's games aren't the most important thing in my life, I'm very glad to say. There's nothing like work to take your mind off things, is there? No, I think it's got me stewing. I think the only thing on my mind is whether or not his writ is going to drop through the post. Devious little rat. Sounds like him. Trouble is, uh, Deirdre's worried sick, and while she's fretting the way she is, the little rat is winning. Oh, well, talk of the devil. Yeah. Scotch, please, Gloria. Uh, make it a large one. This one will be on Uncle Ken, I think. I don't believe this. Well, it's the least you can do. Much cheaper than a lawsuit any day of the week. What are you talking about? Oh, hasn't word got through to you yet? I've decided to drop my action against you. But don't bother to thank me. It's your little wife you should be thanking. I mean, if she hadn't come to my flat last night... Well, anyway, I've decided to drop it. Must be worth a drop of scotch, I thought. <laughs> did it for you. You don't think I enjoyed it, do you? Well, somebody did, and that's for sure. I've never been so humiliated. I mean, you really are determined to make me look an utter fool, aren't you? Well, you'd have been even more of a fool, having printed an apology and paid a fortune in damages. For God's sake, Ken, I'd have thought you'd be grateful. Grateful? You went round to his vulgar little flat, you wheedled, you whined, you... Well, what did you have to do to make him come round to it? What are you talking about? You know full well what I'm talking about. There's only one language that Baldwin understands, the quid pro quo. You scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. I don't suppose it's back that were scratched, was it? Oh, that's disgusting. Oh, that's disgusting. I'll tell you what's disgusting. You and Baldwin, that's what's disgusting. I want you to take that back, Ken. I'm taking nothing back. I'm bloody furious. Oh, so you'd rather have a lawsuit hanging over your head, would you? And possibly thousands in damages. Well, rather than have you behaving like some sort of a... Yes. Right. Thanks, Ken. I've got a few meetings this afternoon, so I won't have time to cook. If you want to eat something, you'd better get it yourself. Oh, you're running away now, eh? No. I'm not staying here to be insulted, but I'm not running away. Why didn't you tell me you'd been to see him? Because of this, that's why. This... this stupid row we're having. I knew you'd do this. And all I was trying to do was help. Have you any idea what it feels like to have Baldwin tell me? in public, that my wife has been sucking up to him in his flat. I've got to go. Deirdre, this is important. No, it's not. It's not in the least bit important. It's just the same old boring nonsense. And I am sick to the back teeth of trying to keep the peace between two stupid, overgrown adolescents. Deirdre! And I am not listening to another flaming word. Hello, hello, hello. What's all this thing? Don't do that. Guilty conscience? Oh, I just thought I'd have a bit of peace, put my feet up, watch the telly. What are you doing off work? Got a couple of hours off, haven't I? Do you have to spend them here, do you? It's nice to be welcome in the family homestead, isn't it, eh? Yeah, well, if you'd have had a day like I've had, you'd need a bit of peace. You know, I've treated like a dog at that pub. Worse, a dog does get stroked. Well, I'll throw you a bone if you want. There's some letters here for you. Pills, isn't that all I need, eh? I mean, some folk get fan mail, love letters, pools wins. What do I get? Fill in this form and I'll give you 17 ways of winning a million quid and bills. I, uh, I open one by mistake. Yeah, you're welcome to. Any letter addressed to me in this house is bound to be trouble, isn't it? You're welcome to, uh... Put the kettle on some, will you? No. No, I'm, come on, be a good lad and put the kettle on. Well, do it yourself, I'm not your maid. You read this, have you? What? This letter. I wouldn't read your mail, would I? I realised this was tearing and open. No, you're a good lad. 
I'll put the kettle on. Okay. Well, I knew 600 quid does sound a lot of money for busting your nose, doesn't it? I knew you flaming ad. <laughs> hey, keep it to yourself, hey. Don't let your mother know. It's gonna cost you if you keep it to yourself. There's a bottle of whiskey in it for you. 600 quid. Fantastic. Oh, I'm glad I've had a little bit of luck. Between me and you. Whatever you say. Good lad. Bottle of whiskey. Okay. Good lad. Hey, we're in the money. And the rest. We're in the money. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, when you finish that, nip down trousers and get the tune off the flags, will you? I'll paint your front door and all the shall I, Jack. I'll finish it. No, he's gone to the bank. Financial matters, eh? That's what I like to hear. Well, not exactly. It's not Wall Street. He's just paying it. It isn't good on help. It's not like having a bit in your pockets. And you can say what you like. Mrs. Thatcher's done a good job in this country, you know. <sighs> and it's good to see a young woman like yourself earning a keep, too. Most of them these days are on the scrounge. <laughs> Look, uh, when Alf gets back, tell him I might just get back to him, but it all depends. What on? Money matters. Don't you worry your head. Hiya. Hiya. I'm going bonkers. Why? Oh, nothing. How'd you get on? Oh, same as yesterday. Just an assistance for the butcher. But I tell you, Sal, I am not sloshing around in blood all day. I can't be doing with it. Do you mind? Right, listen, get yourself round to Gail's cafe because she's looking for somebody. Washing up? What does it matter if it is washing up? I'm not washing up all day, Sal. Look, Gina, beggars can't be choosers, can they? And as it happens, it's not washing up. It's a sandwich round. The what? Get yourself round to that cafe and find out what. And when you get the job, I'm on 10% commission. You're flipping not. You'll have a cheese butty and like it, my girl. This isn't the Gobi Desert, and I'm not the only oasis. Who is it? It's me, boss. Who? Jack. Jack Douglas, can I, can I have a word? What do you want? Well, it's it's a bit private, you see. I'm not lending you money. No, I'm, I'm not asking. Promise? Scout's honour. Right, then. Hey, th thanks, boss. I'm, I'm sorry for disturbing you, mate. But... Yeah, what is it? Do you know it? It's funny you mentioning money. Out! No, I meant it. No, 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 it isn't that. I've, I've got my check from the insurance company for me nose, you know. So? So I work. How do you cash it? Well, you pay it into the bank like any other civilised human being. Mm -hmm. I haven't got a bank, boss. You, you haven't got a bank? No, boss. Well, what am I supposed to do? Well, I thought I'd give it to you. You could cash it, and, and then give me the money. Not in a million years. No, and it's a cheque, boss. I mean, if it's from the insurance company, it's not going to bounce, so where's the risk? I, mean, I, I was going to slip you a couple of quid, you know. Oh, yeah. How much is it? 600 quid. 600 flaming pounds? You must be joking. And where's the arm? Jack, look, you're an innocent in these things. Suffice it to say that... Fiscal matters are a veritable type rule. And, and I mean, £600 credit against my account would represent what they call a substantial imbalance. You understand? No, boss. No, I didn't think you would. That's another reason I'm not cashing your cheque. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do with it? Jack, do you regard me as a friend? Sort of. Sort of? Well, I have learned through bitter experience, Jack, never to give financial advice to friends. Because that's the quickest and easiest way of falling out. Is it? In church. Oh. You understand that? Sort of. Well, that's the best we can hope for, I suppose, in the circumstances. Yeah, but what, what am I going to do with it? I'm stuck with a piece of paper with 600 quid on it, and I, I may as well wrap toffees in it. It's a bit of a puzzle, isn't it, Jack? Don't be late in tonight, will you? Hey, 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 boss, boss. Just one more thing. What? Now, you won't mention this to our Vera, will you? Mention what? I've, I've, I've got the check. See, I'm keeping it as a surprise. Oh, I... <laughs> she likes surprises. <laughs> she must. <laughs> Married to you. No, I'm at home. Uh, I thought I'd ring and make sure you were there. No, no, Martin's not expecting me back for at least an hour. Yeah. Well, I know I said I couldn't make it today, but you're not complaining, are you? Uh, listen, I'll uh, I'll check a few figures and uh, drop it over to you later on, okay? Yeah, okay. Cheers. What are you doing here? Olivia, why hadn't you noticed? You said you'd be late. So, I will be. I came back to make a couple of phone calls. Anything else you want to know? 
What are you so ratty about? Well, it's all these questions every time I see you. So what do I tell Rita? What I said. I'm going to be late. You said you may be late. Well, you can tell her that I will be now, okay? See you. You can't let me get away with it. You have got to make a stand. Here's me stuck on my own. She's gone to collect the kids. Of course she's got to collect the kids, but where does that leave me? Stuck here on your own. I know, and you don't get any thanks, and a young bit of a thing will come along, get the job, and before you know where I am... You'll be out. You've said it. Give us a cup of tea then, Phyllis, please. It's a crying shame. Ah, oh, it's not that bad. That's how long it's been brewed. <laughs> how about for man to go on strike? Strike, why? Right? Never you mind. Hi. All right, want a cup of tea? Eh, uh, no thanks, I'm not stopping. I just popped in to see Gail. Last time I'll offer you a cup of Put one again. Here you go, both. Cheers. She's out. Out? Oh, do you know when she'll be back? She won't be back tonight. Mm. Why? Well, it's just about that job that's going, that's all. It's gone. Gone? I've only just heard about it. Well, I've heard about it too late then, haven't you? All right, there's no need to be nasty. Hey, and you can tell your mates and all. I'm sorry I asked. I'm sure. That told her, didn't it? Hey, you all right? No. <laughs> She's sexy. How's life in the Black Bull jungle? What's up with her? I don't know. She's refusing a cup of tea off me, I know. Do you want one? In a second. Have you been working with my dad today? <sighs> Some of it, why? Not all of it. Well, most of it, why? This morning or this afternoon. Well, both. Why? What's the matter? You wouldn't tell me if I asked, would you? If you asked what? Don't matter. You sure you don't mind, Mum? Of course not, love. I couldn't be happier babysitting. Anyway, we'd like to see you going out, pair of you. Oh, we never get out and we don't even need a babysitter. Oh. Well, <laughs> you can make your own entertainment, can't you? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Hiya, Gina, how'd you get on? It's gone. You're joking. What's up, love? Oh, that job that Gail's got going at the cafe, Gina went after it. When? Oh, I just went, didn't I? Oh, that was quick. It wasn't got an hour ago. Yeah, well, it has now. You did go, didn't you? You're not lying to us. I went quarter of an hour ago, OK? Hang on, uh, girl, she'd have been with the kids quarter of an hour ago. Look, are you calling me a liar or something? Actually, if you must know, I didn't see Gail, all right? I saw Phyllis. Flipping out, that's all I need. I'm a liar now and all. She... Oh! oh. A minute like that, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right, Brian. She's just a bit down at the moment. Did you get us a drink, love? Oh, I'm sorry, Vera. I forgot. Sorry, love. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? That's what friends are for, isn't it? Oh, here you are. Get yourself one. Get brown and sunny one while you're oh. here. Uh, I'm okay, Vera. Yeah, I'm all right now. Another treat round here. I'll be with you in a tick, Vera. Oh, hey. Oh, you right. timed yeah. that right, haven't you? It's my round. What you having? Uh, no, I'm not stopping, Ivy. I'm only here for a favour. Oh, it's all right, love. Brian's asked. Can you do it? It's all sorted. Oh, great. Thanks, Ivy. Pleasure, up. Hey, hey, you found a girl. Who has? A sandwich girl. Don't tell me it's a boy. I haven't found anybody. She is flipping lying to us then. Who? Gina reckons she went round to the shop and you told her the job had gone. No, no. She said Phyllis had said the job had gone. That's the same thing. Uh, no, it's not actually, Sally. Tell Gina that Phyllis might have been mistaken and I'll see her at the cafe at 10 o'clock tomorrow, OK? Oh, yeah. thanks very much, girl. Right. Thanks. I've got to go. Left the kids with you. OK. See you. Bye. Sure. Yeah, then, Vera. I have just about the line. That's all. Uh, well, it's Ivy's round, isn't it? When it's my turn, you watch. It'll be whiskies all round. Hey, I would have thought it'd be at least double whiskies in the circumstances. What circumstances? Your good news. What? The insurance check. The one your Jack asked my Alec to cash this after. 600 quid. <laughs> I won't be standing there supping light ales, I can tell you. You think you're clever, don't you? Well, you're not. Do you know all that air you're supping down that pub cellar? It'd run your brain, same way it's run your socks. Have you done? You think you're cunning? Do you know you're about as cunning as a woodlouse in a firewood factory? <laughs> Have you finished? You'd have not told me about that check that come, would you? No, I thought I wouldn't find out. Do you know it'd be the same if you won the pools, you'd sit there and say no. If I won the pools, I wouldn't be sat here, but <sighs> sat somewhere where you couldn't find me. Well, look, I'm telling you, I want half that money. So come on, where have you put the check? Somewhere safe. Somewhere you won't think of looking not in a million years. Mm, down your trousers, is it? I won't dignify that remark with a reply. Look, we said we'd share that money, didn't we? Spend it together on a, a nice little holiday, something for ours. But it's got nothing to do with you, has it? 
I mean, who was it addressed to? Me. Whose name was on the check? Mine. Yes, but it's my insurance that's paying out, isn't it? But it was me that got hurt. It was my pain and suffering. Where were your pain and suffering? Pain and suffering! I've had that ever since I married you. It's all right, you wanted to share in the money. You didn't share in the accident, did you? But you wouldn't have had an accident, would you, if you had to be for me, you silly arse Hey, 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 I'll have a nice lay until you start with that fog on. Terence, don't be rude to your mother. That's my job. Look, I'm off to work. But I'll tell you this, I am finished with you, sunshine. I want my share of that money. I do. Why don't you just give it to her? You'd be saving yourself a lot of aggro, wouldn't you? Tell us your mother can shout at me till she's blue in the face. Now, it might bother somebody who's not happy to it, but me? I've been getting it for that long, it's like water of a duck's back. If Mavis starts on about her wedding arrangements this morning as I walk through that shop door, I shall set about her with a rolled-up copy of Bride magazine. What? Do the boss tell her to give it a rest? I keep doing. She doesn't hear me. Her head's full of honeymoons and mortgages and uh, joint bank accounts. Do you want dropping off at school, huh? I'll be ready in a few minutes if you do. Yeah, OK. What's up with her these days? She's all right. All right? Oh, look, this morning she's hardly said a word since she got out of bed. Take no notice. Well, I'd like to think she'd tell me if there was anything on her mind, anything wrong. Like what? I don't know. If I knew that, I wouldn't be worrying. Rita, would I? girls of her age have always got some mood on, haven't they? Maybe some boy ignored her at school. Maybe she's fallen out with the best mate. Don't worry about it. Life's too short. Yes, I know it ought to be today, but I'm, I'm up to my eyes already. Is tea time any good to you? No, um... Look, I'll tell you what, what about lunchtime? It, fine. Yeah, the King's Head. Isn't that the one behind the town hall? Right, uh, about one o'clock then. Okay. Bye-bye. I'm going to get that look every time I answer the phone now, am I? For your information, that was Mrs. Galloway, Social Services. Did I ask who it was? Oh, you didn't say a word. It was obvious from your manner. So I'm telling you. I've got to see this woman, and lunchtime is the only time I can get hold of her. All right, I need to get aggressive about oh, I'm it. Sorry, Ken, but it was such a suspicious look you gave me. Are you surprised? And you go meeting Baldwin behind my back? God, Ken, you know why I went to see him. We've been over this a dozen times. Look, if he'd sued you and the newspaper like he threatened to, well, you said yourself. You stood to lose everything. The paper. Maybe this house, everything. And what gets me is I try to help and all I get is nasty looks. Yeah, but why all the secrecy? Why go behind my back and you didn't even tell me when you'd seen him? Yeah, because I didn't want to build your hopes up for one thing. And for another, because I knew you'd get mad. And you have done. Yeah, well, you know how I feel about you even speaking to Baldwin, let alone begging him for anything. I didn't beg him. Oh, well, what were you doing then? I asked him to be reasonable. And he is being. He's dropped the case, hasn't he? I mean, would you sooner have not seen him at all, and he was still taking you to court? Sooner have to pay him thousands in damages, would you? I think I would. Yes. Well, that's easily said now. You're off the hook, aren't you? I'm going to work. Oh, Ken. <laughs> So I'll love to see you tonight. And uh cheer up, eh? You know we're not that bad looking, your dad. I'm not surprised he's still pulling. Look, just shut it, alright. Hey, what's up? Have you really seen him with another woman? And I want the truth, Joanne. I mean you won't lie to me about this, would you? No, God's honour. Well, have you seen him? It's a woman in the next road to us, Oakwood Road. Mrs. Burns, I think she's called. Is she married? Divorced, I think. I've seen him two or three times now. When I'm on my way home from school, he would just come in out to the house. One time she gave him a right passionate kiss. What's up? We're not late, are we? You're back early, Baldwin, give you the push, has he? 
Hey, Baldwin's gone out somewhere. I, I tell he's driving him somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, I thought I'd nip out. I just wanted a quick word, like, um... Yeah, well, I'm off to work, lovey. You can have that quick word, and that word is... Ta-da! Hey, hang on! You know you're making me ill, don't you? I can't work, I can't do all that. I'm that upset over that insurance money. Well, I knew you'd be upset, you see. That's why I never told you cheque had come. But it's not the cheque that's upset him, is it? It's you, you swine. It's all right, you saying you've had all the suffering. What about me? I've had to pay extra insurance because of that crash. Plus the first 50 quid towards the, the car repairs. I paid it, didn't I? Yeah, well, you've learnt a valuable lesson, love. You'll have to drive more careful in future, you see. Look, I'm entitled to some ads. And seeing as I am a generous fellow, you will get something as soon as I get the cheque cast. I mean, I don't know how much. It'll depend on what mood I'm in, how much earache I'm getting. Well, I'll, uh, I'll cash it for you. <laughs> you how could you cash it? Yeah, well, I've got this, uh, like, account, you know, at Building Society. So, listen, if you sign the back of the cheque, I can pay in. Oh, you've got, you've got money in the Building Society. Oh, it's all coming out now. Now, this... This is what I call deceit. It's only a few quid for a rainy day. So, like I say, you you give me the cheque, I'll pay it into the bank, then they'll give me the money, and then I can give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> you must think my name's Arthur. If you get your hands on that cheque, I can wish my compensation goodbye. Look, Jack, you know you can trust me. I can trust you, V, about as far as I can chuck you. Now, I'd like to trust you. I'd like to trust you about 800 miles. You know that money I paid into building society? You know what it's for? To bury you away than a bloody good knees up after. You think I'm past it, don't you? No, I don't. Well, you must do it. You want to be taking young girls on. I'm not taking on girls, Phyllis. I'm taking on one girl to help expand the sandwich trade. They'd rather be flirting than washing dirty pots. Phyllis. If a lad comes in and winks at them, we'll drop everything. Phyllis! Mind you, so would I. But nobody winks at me these days. Phyllis, will you listen to me? I am not trying to get rid of you. I need someone to do the sandwiches and deliver them because it's too much for the two of us. So don't worry. Oh, I've heard that a lot in my lifetime. <laughs> Especially with fellas. As soon as a fella says, don't worry, I know I'm in trouble. Hiya. Our Sally said you're still looking for an assistant. Is that right? Could be. Hold the thought, will you, Phyllis? Let's sit down. Have you worked in a cafe before? No, but I've been in plenty, though. Well, what have you done? Uh, work, I mean. Well, not much. There's not much been going recently. It's hard work, in a cafe. Yeah, I know. Mind you, to be honest, well, to be fair to you, I won't be stopping long, you see. I'm going to be an air hostess. They promised you a job? Well, no, not yet. I mean, I'll be applying about New Year because they start taking girls on then for the summertime, like. Well, it'll be good experience then, working for me. Do you reckon? Mm, well, here yeah, you'd be a waitress and as an air hostess, you'd be a flying waitress. Hmm. Okay, good for your lads in here then, do you? Right, I've got Arthur Black coming at one o'clock to take me to lunch, so I'm going back across the road. Right. Listen, I might not be back till about four, so keep an eye on those girls, will you? Me? Well, I thought that was Ivy Tills's job. It is. But with Ivy being one of the girls herself, she's got one eye on them and the other one keeping the lookout for me. <laughs> Look at them two. Make a right pair. A couple of wide boys. Soup Matt boring, young Terry. Oh, yeah, till it comes to the crunch. Yeah. It's the two of a kind, all right. They both put number one first. <laughs> right, then, I'm off. Right, uh, will you be wanting me to drive you later? I can't tell you that now, but uh, watch a drink, won't you? Right. Oh, yeah. You've got no time for uh, drunken drivers. Hey, man, the chief comes. <laughs> oh, Kenneth! Being good, I hope. Not writing any more naughty stories. Uh, half a bit, please, Gloria. Right, Kenneth. Look at it. Huh? The Social Democrats have more MPs than we've got customers. I uh, thought it'd be quiet this dinner time. I think I'll pop into town. What for? Bit of physiotherapy. I've seen a nice little frock in Winder at Barton's. A frock? You've got more frocks than you know what to do with. What's up with you? We're not short, are we? I mean, you're doing great. Them club acts of yours are all working steady. Ah, working steady at this precise moment, yes. But it could all change overnight. Oh, well, in that case, I'd best spend it while we've got it. I'll see you later, love. How's it going? Uh, not too bad, Terry. 
I thought Mike could see sense over that libel case. The solicitor didn't half put the wind up, Mike. <laughs> Gave him a right frightener about how you could never bank on getting the right verdict and how much it might cost him. <laughs> when was this? Last week sometime. And his solicitor advised him to drop the case? Well, between me and you, yeah. He told Mike they'd be doing himself a big favour if he forgot all about it. Yeah, I might have known. If any favours are being done, Baldwin will be the one on the receiving end. Come again? I, oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm just, uh, just thinking aloud. <laughs> I'm in chips, I think. Hello, Martin, love. How are you? I'm all right, love. How are you? Working me socks off. As usual. <laughs> Just waiting for chips, Martin. Won't be long. I'll be oh. there. All right, then. Cheers. Hiya. What are you doing here? Supposed to be at school, aren't you? We do get a dinner hour, you know. <clears throat> Where's my dad? Don't ask me. I am asking you. Because he's not at the cabin with Rita and he's not at home. Well, we'll be at the yard then, won't I've you? just come from there. Well, I don't know. He'll be chasing a job up or something. It's a waste of time, Martin. Keep covering up for him. I don't know what you're talking about. Gone to Oldwood Road, has he? See Mrs. Burns? He has, hasn't he? Can you scrub that pie and chips, please? It's true, isn't it? It's right. with that woman, isn't he? Well, Tia Mavis told her. You'd think it was the world's first. You'd think nobody'd ever got married before. Ah, <laughs> oh, well, Mavis never got married before. You've hit it, Betty. Mm. I think she'll go through with it this time. If she doesn't, I'll throttle her. <laughs> Hiya, girls. Hi. Bottle of lager, is there? Yes, please, Vera. Two bottles of lager, love. Hey, look at him. Gets a cheque for 600 quid and he don't even have to buy his wife a drink. Yeah, and it were only codology, you know, that insurance claim. We're all a fiddle. Shut it, Vera. I will not shut it. His own mother told me what a miserable get he is. His own mother. Yes, well, do you think you could save these domestic pleasantries for your own fireside, Mrs. Duckworth? You want to watch him? You know, he'll be supping a battle of wheat down that cellar. Shut your mouth here before a shutting fire, Jack. A word. Yes, Alec. Do you want me to chuck her out? Oh, well, I'd like to see you try. I am, I am sick of your marital problems being thrashed out on these premises. Not as sick as me, Alec, I can tell you. Yes. Well, just take your lady wife home and sort something out, will you? And I don't want to see you back on these premises until it, it is done, right? It's quarter past one, nearly. Your wages stop now. When you and your Vera are talking again, instead of shouting, you might be able to come back. Until then, you're off the payroll. Oh, no, hey. never mind. Just take her home and come to some arrangement with her. Do you know I've always stuck up for you, love? When he's been moaning, what a miserable beggar you have. You, your you are digging my flaming grave with your mouth, you. I don't come know on. what anybody says. I think you're OK, love. Come on. Vera, what about your dreams? Up it. Up it. Hang on. If you're not taking Jack back to him and their Vera are pals again, that might be the last you've seen of him. <laughs> Would I lose any sleep? Would I? Uh, hiya! Hiya! Hi. I thought you were going to go and see Gail Tilsley about a job. I have. Dressed like that, Gina, it's our plot. That's what you think. I start tomorrow. Oh, okay, ah. babe. Right, you're on a thing. Ah. <laughs> Anything you want. A Harvey Wallbanger. <laughs> hey, if they make it, you can have it. Oh, oh. isn't it lovely, my brother-in-law, eh? When you finish with him, can I help him? Get in! Get in! Don't you tell me to get in! Here we go again. Your darling mother has just shown me up again in front of a pub oh. folk. Not only that, telling all of Sunday that my compensation were a fiddle. Look till I get my share, it won't. Alec Gilroy won't let me work for him, not till I can shut her up. There's only one way you can shut me up. And I am considering it. And if I get a sympathetic judge, I could be out in four or five years. Now listen, there's been no much trouble since that cheque come. And you can't spend it, because nobody's going to cash it for you. I've told him I'll cash it. Why don't you do yourself a deal, Dad? That way we can all get a bit of peace and quiet. And another thing. Till I get my share, you'd best not go to sleep. Not in this house. Eh? Why, why not? Because as soon as you go to sleep, I'm going to do something nasty to you. Such as what? You'll find out when it's too late. Come on, Dad, do yourself a favour. <sighs> we polite you'll get me hands on done hands on me check. I'll, I'll never see me compensation again. Look, a legal agreement. That's what you want. <coughs> Signed and witnessed. That way, you're safe. <sighs> Half. Yeah. Plus my fee for sorting things out and witnessing everything. Uh, shall we say, uh, 50 quid? All, all right, all right. I'm sick of arguing. <laughs> no rough stuff at night, eh? Of course, not, love. 
Not unless you're volunteering, <laughs> which isn't often, is it? Hey, what are you doing here? You wait to see me till tonight. Well, what do you think? I'm just test driving a car if you're stung. Any chance of a cup of tea? To you, no chance. I've taken on a new girl, by the way. Uh, Gina, you know, Sally Webster's sister. It's a bit chancy, isn't it? I mean, that guy she was knocking about with is really bad news, you know. Yeah, well, she's a bit dizzy, but I thought I'd risk it. She's very bright. She's took on a new girl. You'll have to speak up a bit. I can't hear what you're saying. I can't speak any louder. Beg your pardon? I tattled her this morning and she says she's not going to get rid of me. Well, I'm just the same. She would say that, wouldn't she? I mean, I don't want to get left with just pension and no money to spend, do I? Happen you're sickening for a cold or something like that. If I'd no money to throw about, where does that leave you? You'd have to buy your own beer. Have I done something to offend you? Hi. Sorry I'm so late back. I had a right day. I've never stopped. Fancy a cup of tea? I'll make it. I want to tell you something. Heard something today that'll interest you. Something Terry Duckworth let slip in the Rovers. It seems that Baldwin's solicitors advised him to drop his action. And he took that advice last week. Last week? But he never said anything. Well, of course he wouldn't, would he? He's not going to rush to tell me I'm off the hook, is he? He enjoyed seeing me sweat. Yes, I suppose he did. I'll tell you something else, too. You needn't have bothered going around there begging. Oh, how many more times, Ken? I didn't beg. All right, all right, I'll take that back. But he enjoyed letting you, what shall we say, ask, didn't he? He liked seeing you on the hook, too. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, just wait till I see the little squirt. I'll tell him exactly what I've Ken, done. Ken, that is exactly what he wants. Can't you see what he's trying to do? Oh, yeah, of course. He just wants to humiliate me. No, I think it goes a bit further than that. He's trying to stir things up between you and me, you know, get us at each other's throats. Yeah, yeah, you could be right. And he's succeeding, isn't he? Uh, you and me have done nothing but row this past few days. Yeah, and if we were to fall out, he wouldn't be slow in offering you a word of comfort, would he? Well, he won't get the chance. Do you know how we could really give Baldwin the needle? Go on. Show him his little scheme hasn't worked. Show him a... United front. Loving couple was more what I had in mind. Hi. Making yourself useful? That's what I like to see. Please your bag yet? Nope. Just as well, really, I suppose. How do you mean? Because I don't want Rita to hear this, that's why. I know what you're doing, Dad. I'm not with it. Dad, I know. Jenny, if there's something bothering you, of come on. Of course there's something bothering me. Like hearing you on the phone the other day and things I get told at school. What sort of things? Like you doing an awful lot of visiting in Oakwood Road. Oakwood Road? Yeah. Done a couple of jobs in Oakwood Road. Full alarm systems. They say you've got a lady friend. By the heck, your mates have got nasty minds, haven't they? Eh? I give you a bit of advice, love. Don't take any notice of nasty gossip. Do what I do. Ignore it. Okay? If your Vera comes through those doors and starts creating, that is it. She's barred and you're fired. No, there's no way, boss. It's all settled. Yes, well, it better have been. I'm having no more of your argy-bargy on these premises. But well, we've come to terms, you see. Ironed out his differences. All oh, right. She hit you with it, did you? The iron? <laughs> you know, you're as good as your turns. You should be on the stage, you know, with your gags like that. No good crawling, Jack. Look, I want no more trouble with your wife. Got enough trouble with my own. Oh, yes, Bet. Oh, it's very nice. It suits you. Well, it should do at the price. Mind you, it's my husband, you see. I mean, me, I'd be happy wearing an old potato sack. But Alex out look here as well as he keeps saying, Darling, as long as I'm making the money, I want to see it on your back. What was it our Vera said when she left work? I've told you once. I'm going to the building society, she said. I'm going to pay our Jack's check-in. She definitely said that. How many more times, Jack? She said I'll see you at Rovers. Me, she'll be here any minute now. She'd better I'd be. Oh, oh Deirdre. As lovely as ever. Hey, Ken. Evening, Mike. 
Can I get you something? No, 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 my shelf. I insist. Gloria. Yes. Large scotch with the ballroom, please. And uh, gin tea, did you? Please, Lord. Good, good. And a uh, half a... No, gin and tonic for me, too. What the hell? Let's call it a celebration drink. Why? What you celebrating? Oh, nothing special. Nothing special. Just uh, feeling good to be alive. Yeah, who needs a reason? I mean, it's enough just being happily married, isn't it? Yeah? Well, I'll take your word for it. Hiya, Joe. Hiya, love. Hi, Bill. Uh, get us a bottle of light, Tiger. Get one for yourself. Right, Derek. Have you been to the, uh, you know? Oh, yeah, I just got there before it closed. Right, I'll, I'll have a word with Alec and see if I can slip home with you, eh? Oh. <laughs> and you're into romance. It used to be like this, you know, before we got married. You just have to hold your horses, Tiger, to live. I'm talking about the money. <laughs> don't get it out in here. We don't want all of a sudden seeing a load of cash, do we? What cash? Don't flee. Don't play silly beggars. I'm talking about the cash, but the check. Oh, Jack, love. When you put a check in bank, they don't chuck money off a shovel. You've got to wait till the check is cleared. <laughs> wait. Well, what do you mean, cleared? Well, until they see it's all right, then they give you the cash. Don't yes, they? that's right. That is, Jack. I mean, you have to wait. How long? Well, uh, about a week, yeah. usually. A week? Are you two at it again? Oh. Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, you're no. just feeling a bit weak, you see, oh. aren't you, love? Yeah. You can't flannel me, Dad, so don't even bother trying. Who do you think you are, talking to your father like that's this, eh? That's flannel, too. Well, I know you've been seeing this woman. Somebody else has admitted it. Who? Martin? It doesn't matter who Right, does. well, that's him finished. He shut his mouth off once too often, that lad. This isn't about him. This is about you. What you've been doing. To Rita. To all of all us. All right, Jenny, now that's enough. I've had all I'm going to take off you. This is what you did to my mum, isn't it? What you're doing to Rita now. This is what you made my mum go through, isn't it? Oh, it is getting chilly out there. Jenny? What's up? Was she crying? No, no. No, no she, was, uh, she was a bit cheeky, so I told her off. You fancy a drink? No breakfast for me, Ta. Not dieting again, are we? No, I've uh, got an early first period, so I'll grab a bun at break or something. Don't try and come it with me, Jenny. I know an excuse when I see one. What excuse? Same as last night, when you rushed off and didn't come back till bedtime. I was just working late, Louise, as that was all. Jenny, I've neither the time nor the inclination to play games with you. Just what was going on between you and your dad last night? When? When? When I come in, you could have cut the atmosphere with a knife. Obviously, you'd had a big row about something. Oh, that... Well, you know what he's like. I mean, he makes a big fuss over nothing, do not he? Rita, do you know where my blue shirt is? Right, I'll be off. See you tonight. It's not in the airing cupboard, and it's not in the, in the oh, laundry room. Well, it can come off. I'll sew it on later. Is Jenny gone already? I don't know if she's keeping out of my way or yours. Well, I told you last night. Take the notice. She takes after her mother. She was moody and all. And I told you last night, this is more than a mood. There's something going on. I want to Rita, know what it is. there is nothing going on. Don't you start getting neurotic on me and all. Why do men always accuse women of being neurotic when they've got something to ask? Look, she made a few remarks that were out of order, and I had to cut her down to size. That's all. Come home at dinner time. We'll talk about it then. I can't. I've already made plans. On planet. If there's one thing I won't have, Alan, it's secrets. Mm. Not in my own home. <coughs> What's up with you? I didn't get any sleep last night, did I? With you poking me in the ribs every five minutes, giving me different ideas of spending money. Oh, George, I'm that excited. Do you know, it's ages since we had such a big lump sum. We have never had such a big lump sum, Vera. And who's it down to, eh? Emma's only takes half the proceeds. That's who. Do you know, Jack, I was just thinking it. It's a pity, really, you broke your nose. Last a bit of sympathy, eh? I mean, while you were at it, you could so easily have broke your arm or your leg. Or oh, both. Well, either way, I mean, you'd have been as good as new by now, wouldn't you? And we'd have been a lot better off. Have you worked that out, dear? Well, think about it. If a broken nose is worth 600 quid, well, a leg, well, I mean, it's bound to be worth the ground. And an arm and a leg, do worth an arm and a leg. That's a nice attitude to have. Your husband's pain and suffering. Yeah, but that's the old point, isn't it? With a little bit of extra suffering, we'd have had a lot more money to look forward to, wouldn't we? 
Oh, I'll try and remember that one next time. Oh, I don't want you to hurt yourself, Chuck. I mean, why won't I love you, don't I? You be little cuddly, buddly jacket. Last thing I want is for you to be miserable. I should flame it think so. Yeah, of course. Don't you and I think what I could have done with a couple of grander time. Not too much salad cream in the egg mayonnaise. Don't worry, I won't. Dead sick. I hope she washed her hands before she started that lot. Scrubbed and sterilised, all right. Would you like to see? You can take an appendix out with these hands. And no licking your fingers, neither, while you're at it. Yes, Sarge. How about adding BLTs to the menu? What's that? Bacon, lettuce and tomato. I've read about them. They have them in Florida. They have them on British Rail. Yeah, well, try them on the market. See how they go. Right. Hi. Hi. You, uh, don't mind if I experiment on you, dear Anne. Not if it's mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, no. Do you want me to uh, throw me back? Back to your sandwiches. I'll do the serving here. Sorry. It's all right. Ask her for a bit of tea. No, it's, uh, it's too early in the morning for all that kinky stuff. I'll just settle for a coffee, please. What's the old bag? You just do your job and she'll do hers, all right? Just a coffee then, love. Go on, chuck us a slice of toast and all. And, uh, whatever the head girl at St Trinian's is having. Well, I see you cheat you. I'm offering to buy you a cup of coffee, Ginger. Now, what is wrong with that, eh? All right, then, go on. And I'll have a piece of toast as well, please. I'll pay for that myself. Oh, we are independent, aren't we? Yes, we are. And I'll tell you what, you don't call me Ginger and I'll not call you Duffy, all right? It's a deal. I didn't have any breakfast this morning. And you're the days when you just can't wait to get out of the house. Every day's oh. one of them days round the house. Why do you think I'm in here? I must say you've uh, gone out very tasty. <laughs> this outfit? Very sexy, yeah. Especially if you're wearing stockings with them. I'll take those. Better drink yours quick, eh, Flower? You'll be late for calling register. Oh, we don't bother with that in sixth form. You see, A-level year, you're treated more like a college student. Well, myself, I've never seen the point of all that boring studying. I reckon if a girl's got what it takes, she can get anywhere she wants. Oh, yeah? Like Queen of the Ambutties. By the way, you've got mustard on your nose. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Times then pops in to settle his bill earlier on. Good. That'll save me going to the bank. She must about cover your week's wages in lieu. Hey? Of notice. I want you out of here by the end of the night. Not again. It's getting to be a plain man, have it, this? It's not a joking matter, you know. Eh? So I'm supposed to have done this thing, then. You've been shooting off your big mouth to our Jenny about my private business, haven't you? Eh? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I know Jenny's got wins on Yeah, from you. Not from me, no. From one of her mates at school. She's come round quizzing me about it. Yeah, and you were only too happy to fill her in, weren't you? Listen, Mr. Bradley. If I wanted to shop you, I could have done it months ago. But you made it very clear then my job was on the line. Besides... Besides what? Besides, Jenny's a mate. And we've been through a lot together. I'm not going to start giving her more than I grow by telling her that... Sorry, that one. I tell him what monkey business the dad's been getting up to in his spare time. Are you sure he'll be all right? Well, of course he'll be all right. He's not a child, Rita. He's a grown man, a mature adult. Oh, two copies, please. We don't often see you ladies in here together. What's happened? Chuck shopped at dogs. <laughs> More or less. Derek's minding it. Hey, it was your idea. Well, not all my ideas are that brilliant. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you. It's been like a madhouse in there today. Well, the worst that can happen will be that he'll eat too many nutty clusters. Oh, he's got a real weakness for those. I'll have to put him on a diet once we're married. I think we've got a problem with Jenny. You see, I think Audrey's got the same thing with Alf, but she just doesn't handle it right. And the last thing I'm going to be is a nagging wife. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, thanks. Problem with Jenny. Hmm? Mm. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. I, I'm just thinking how she'd matured a lot lately. Oh, she has. Oh, do you remember what a sullen child she was when we first knew her? I do indeed. <laughs> well, she had good reason, I suppose. But well, 
now she's grown into a lovely young woman, and that's all down to you. Oh, I doubt it. Well, I don't. I don't know where either of them would be without you, neither Jenny nor a dad. Oh, regular good Samaritan, aren't I? So, is it um, boyfriend trouble? Well, you see, you've got to expect that, Rita, because she is of an age. I mean, it isn't everybody that waits till late in life to discover the path to happiness. I don't know whether it's boyfriend trouble or not. That's the problem. Whatever it is, it's between her and Alan, and they're keeping me out of it. Well, I suppose they're entitled. I mean, they are father and daughter. Who am I supposed to be? Flaming housekeeper? Oh, no, of course Oh, come on. Not. You've just said God knows where they'd have been without me. Yes, and I mean it. Well, it hurts. I mean, here's me mug enough to think we're a family, and yet when the chips are down, it's keep your nose out time. Well, perhaps I just don't want to upset you. Well, they're going a fine way about it. So what are you going to do? Get to the bottom of it. What else can I do? Leave it alone. Sometimes... Yeah? Go on. Well... Sometimes people turn over stones and they don't like what they find underneath. Well, that's never been my way, love. Whatever it is, I'd rather deal with it than stick my head in sand. Come on, let's get back before Derek eats us out of shop and nutty clusters. Now what? You get delivering. How the heck am I going to carry this lot? Follow me. Hey, and don't take all day. There's plenty of pots to wash here when you come back. There always is at lunchtime. Your carriage awaits, madam. <laughs> Which museum did you find this in, then? Never mind. It'll get you where you want to go. I'd have preferred a Harley Davidson. Well, you're very lucky the budget stretched to this. Could have been Shanks's pony. Well, you seem to have thought of everything. Except for one thing. And what's that? I can't ride. Oh, come on, you're joking. No, I never learnt. Now, roller skates, yes. Oh, yeah. Still, I suppose I can always show willing, as they say, and try and learn. Now. Oh, that must be the belt. And these must be the handles, and those must be the brakes. Now, if I put my leg over there, and I'm away. <laughs> Be careful. What? Those sandwiches. Don't you worry. After all the hard work I put in. See you, boss. See ya. Uh, uh, forgive the intrusion, but um, mine hostess and I have been wondering if you've given any thought as yet to the uh, nuptials. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's just going to be a, a very small affair, I'm afraid. I mean, I, I know you and Beth had a big do, but, well, it's more a question of watching the pennies a bit, isn't it? Well, no, it's, it's, it's more that we don't really approve of ostentation. Mm. Oh, not that your wedding was ostentatious. I mean, Derek just means... No, 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 a, a prudent man. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Which is why I feel sure that the modest sum of £4.50 a head will appeal <laughs> for a small finger buffet catered by our own chef de cuisine over there. <laughs> well, we haven't really decided on the reception. I mean, I had to hope No, a we... sit down, do. I detest juggling a plate on my knee. Always spill something. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. Oh, no offence, uh, landlord, but uh, I don't think this is quite the ambience I want for my bride. I had in mind something rather more, well, personal. Oh, so would I. Oh, so romantic. I think we could uh, fit eight people quite comfortably into the uh, flat. Oh, we might have to borrow a card table. You don't need my flat. Well, I couldn't get eight people in my bed sitter. <laughs> not, not even eight very thin people. Well, who do you imagine is going to do the cooking? Well, I rather thought you would, dear. I mean, you're always saying you can't wait to show off your culinary skills once we're married. But not on my wedding day. It's all right. I'll make the reception at my house as my wedding present to you. Oh. I was going to suggest it anyway, if that's agreeable to you both. Oh. <laughs> A 
I don't know what all this drama's about. You know what teenage girls are like? I do indeed. I was one myself once. Which I think makes me rather more qualified than you to handle whatever it is this bugging her. Rita, just this once, leave it to me, eh? Trust me. Well, that's a laugh. When you obviously don't trust me as far as your daughter's welfare is concerned. Funny. I thought I'd been a pretty good standing mother these last few years. No one's denying that. But you're still not going to tell me what it is? No, I'm not! Because it's none of your bloody business, that's why! So shut up about it, will you? I'm sick of the whole damn subject. The original truth, so. Well, actually, I, I gave it to Oxfam. Anyway, that's all water under the bridge. It's all in the past. Come on, Dad. Just think, somebody somewhere is chipping about him. Maybe it's his honeymoon nighty. <laughs> well, I think it was a very nice gesture. Hey, you can see who's going to wear the pants in that house, can't you? Well, the same one was in ours. And ours. And ours. Oh, God! You will have your little joke. Aye, won't we? Aye, <laughs> Joe. Like it. Hey, listen, I was thinking about what we were talking about this morning. What was that? About you having disturbed nights. Oh, aye, with you poking me in the ribs with your bony elbows. No. Oh. No, it's that lumpy bed of ours that we've had since Adam were a lad. Look, I think we should get a new bed, a king size. Okay, boy, there's never enough room for a king size bed in there, woman. Well, there's no room for our else's there, but we always seem to manage it. <laughs> She accuses him of being coarse. Dear, do you know, you should get one of them satin bedspreads with lots of them pretty little cushions to match while you're at her. Oh, you mean like uh, crystal carrot? Oh, do you, I love to do a bedroom up like that, you know, but half it won't have it, will you, Arthur? Do you know his idea of sexy decor is sticking a photo of Maggie Thatcher on the wall? <laughs> Not bad for a first day. I got three new ones. Customers? No. Lad's asking me out. <laughs> How did you get on with the bike? Oh, all right. I thought if it's not cold tomorrow, I shall come in my shorts. There's nothing like a bit of like to boost business sales. Well, as long as you remember it's sandwiches you're selling. Go on, have a break. Then you can give Billy sand. I don't need any help. You've just been complaining about the pile of washing up. I can manage on my tongue. I might be an old woman, but I've still got my facilities. Even if I haven't got legs for sure. One lad works at Tillerson's. He's the spitting image of Rick Astley. He said he'd give me a ring, so I said he could take me to the kitchen. And what makes you so sure he'll ring? Because they wrote me number and give us a bell sexy eyes on his cheese and pickle. <laughs> you know, today women have no shame. In my day, it was the fella that made the first move. But not so anymore, eh, Phyllis? You get some of those pots. I'll see to this now. The show was like that. Just feeling a nose bit pushed out, that's all. I'll have a word later. Yeah, I'm beginning to understand how you felt when they took that caretaker's job off you. Oh, aye. You've got the push now, then, have you? Well, it's only a matter of time. They think all that matters today is being young. They don't give a toss about experience. Are you referring to a wench over there? And not Fred. She won't last. How do you know? Obvious, they've got no staying power. That sort of run a mile from hard work. Ah, but she's done very well this morning. This morning? One blooming morning? How old are you? Hey, that's a personal oh, question. Oh, come on, don't let's be coy. I know you're best side of 60, same as me. And if you started working when you were 14, like I did, that's best part of 50 years. 50 years? She has not last 50 hours. I'll take it for somebody who knows. You've got now to worry about. Oh, do you know you're a right pal, Percy? Oh, honestly, you've taken a ton off my mind. Tell me, how can I repair your love? Get me a cup of tea that's not been stewing for hours. I want to send you for typing lessons. Oh, yeah? The whole set. Yeah, well, I've been thinking about that. Maybe I was a bit hasty, eh? 
So you decided to be believing now, have you? Well, let's just say I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. But something I want to tell you, Martin. While you're working for me, you keep your trap shut. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. I'm just going over to Mathers now. See you about five o'clock. Get lost, will you? Oh, very gracious. Listen, Jenny, all you do is get me in bother. He nearly got me in the sights today day because he thought I'd blab to you. Well, tell him you didn't. I think he knows that now. I can't be doing much more of this. You're fired, you're not fired, you're fired, you're not fired. It's bad for me, ulcer. You haven't got an ulcer. No, what I will have if it goes on like this. Well, never mind you. What about Rita? <laughs> what about Rita? She's not going to know about that other slag. Mrs. Burns isn't a slight. Look, I'm not interested in that. I just don't want Rita upsetting. And if we can make my dad see sense, then there's no reason why she hey, shouldn't hey, be. Hey, hey, what's all this wee business? Oh, well, you see him every day. Ain't nothing doing. Just lead me out of this. You can drop subtle hints that you don't mm. think playing around's a good idea. Mm. Just let him see what a lot he's got to lose. Oh, yeah, and what about what I've got to lose? Like my job, for starters. Or even maybe a few teeth. I've seen your dad when he gets physical. You are so selfish! Mm. Do you ever think of anybody but yourself? No. What do you want a microwave for? It's a cooking. You've got a flipping chip pan, haven't you? Do you know, it's like some out of the stone age, your father. I think it's a great idea, ma'am. More for technology myself. I have a computerised cocktail bar on my Porsche when I get it. What is that? What? There. Look, repeat after me. Work or shame. I can me. spell, I can spell. What's it for? Well, I think, Pete, so taking an educated guess, it's for washing your mucky clobbering. Is that right, Ma? Do you know if it were up to him, I'd still be going down to the river, about washing my clothes in the stones. Uh, but what do we need all this flaming gear for, eh? We've got a bit of cash for once in his life, and she's got to run out and spend it on the first bit of rubbish sold to her by a good looking salesman. How does your neighbourhood look then? And if you think I am keeping in that tart's boudoir, you've got another thing coming. Do you know you think your dad would welcome a bit of glamour in his life? I would. Son, can you fix us up? <laughs> very nice indeed. Yes, well, Derek and I thought they were very tasteful, didn't we, Derek? I wasn't too sure at first about the little sprigs of heather, but then I thought, well, a wedding is a time when you can afford to be just a little bit romantic. Oh, well, if you can't do it then, when can you do it? I know I have every intention to put in wedding bells and lucky horseshoes mm. on cake. Well, what cake? Wedding cake, I'm baking it. That's only be expected, you know, to be reimbursed for the ingredients, my time and skill come free. Well, that's very kind of you, Mr. Sutton, isn't it, Derek? Oh, yes, yes, mo most civil. Well, How you much see... will the ingredients cost? Now, as I see it, me and Mrs. Bishop were sort of acting old to old at the, uh, the nuptials, so um, I thought, well, I'd better do my bit. I wasn't exactly intending to involve you, Mr. Sugden. I was the one who volunteered to put on the reception. Now, it's not I as one now, Mrs. Bishop, not these days. It's we as two. It's teamwork. That's the watchword. Especially where the catering factors involved. Well, I think Mr. Sutton's right, Emily. I mean, the modern emphasis is all on partnership in marriage. Mr. Sugden and I are not married. <laughs> no, but when you're living together, when you're sharing the domestic front, and Derek and I fully intend to share the chores, don't we, Derek? Oh, uh, yes, I suppose we do. It's the way all career couples run their lives these days. Career couple? What? You and him? Well, certainly. Derek and I are both working. I mean, he won't expect me to put in a full day at the cabin and then iron his shirt and cook him a meal and do the washing up, will you, Derek? <laughs> it's all ready. Oven's on. Spuds appeal. Table set. You not eating with us? Uh, no. Louise has asked me to have something with them. Again? Well, we're doing a history project together, you see. Oh, it's terminally boring. Well, never mind Louise and never mind your history project. Because you're not leaving here, lady, till I get a straight answer to a straight question. I'll be late. Her man's a stick Jenny, are you in trouble? What kind of trouble? 
Well, what kind of trouble do young girls usually get themselves into? You're not serious. Now listen, love. I'm sick to my back teeth of you and your dad playing silly beggars. Whatever it is, whatever's wrong, I'm part of this family. I have a right to the truth. And if you've gone and got yourself pregnant, I have a right to... Of course to I haven't gone and got myself pregnant. You think I'm stupid? Don't lie to me, Jenny. I can't stand deceit in any shape, manner, or form. Look, I'm not the one who's been lying to you. If you want to know who's been deceiving you, why don't you ask me father? Compliments to the chef. Ah. I think I best be off. Otherwise, Martin will be making cracks about my timekeeping. Got long today, anyway. <coughs> Morning. I must be running late if you're up. Sleep all right, did you? Yeah. Sorry, guy. I'm off now. Bye. Bye. There's some bacon if you want it, love. Rita, about last night. Yeah? Well, I'm sorry. It was just because I was in a mood. I wish I'd never opened my mouth. And I wish you'd open it again and tell me just what it was you were hinting at. I mean, all that about how... Look, I don't want to talk about it, Rita. Please, I, do, I just don't want to talk about well, it. Well, you might not, love, but where does that leave Look, me? Look, just, just, just forget about it. Just forget don't it. Don't get yourself in a Please, state Rita, about it. Please, Rita, just forget it. Okay. I'll forget. Try and forget anyway. Thanks. Sunday at grill if you want that bacon. It's the 19th! You are? I say it's the 19th today! Oh, you are coming on, Father. I mean, soon you'll be able to read all words and not just have to look at the pictures. Yeah. Well, the 19th was the day when you said that my cheque would be cleared and you could get some money out of the account. Oh, yeah, I did say it'd be round about now, didn't I? Right, so, uh, what time do they open? I mean, let's get down there, eh? No, they won't be open yet. Anyway, some of us got jobs to go to. Well, later this morning, then. I mean, you get half hour off, I'll come across for you. Oh, ah, right. no holiday, are you? No, I don't know. I can get in a bit late, see, my back's been playing you. <gasps> You're back. Not again. Listen, I get twinges just because I don't make a song and dance of it, you know. Well, when you get this money, you can buy yourself a corset, can't you? <laughs> hey, I'll tell you something. I'm seriously thinking about filling one of these forms in, you know. But you know, when you die, yeah. leave your body to medical science. Yeah, you want to do that. Happen they'll get more out of it than I am. Yeah. Oh, now, now, come on, V. Look, when are you going down to this building society? If the money's there, let's be having it. Look, I'll try and get down this dinner. That's the soonest I can manage, OK? Oh. Now, Atari, are you coming over the road or what? Not yet. I've got some time off because I was driving him last night. Oops, all right, for some, innit? Right, to Ralph. Hey, bring it over to Rovers, Vera. I'll be there, love. We're in the body, yeah. We're in the body. And, uh, you haven't forgotten the 50 quid I've got coming to me, right? No, lad, you haven't forgotten 50 quid for you. <laughs> and full of loose change for your mother. And all the rest is mine, oh. Well, I'm glad you can make the salad, sister, on if it means making things easier for you. If? Oh, why, well, is she not very good? Well, I seem to be spending all my time acting as referee between her and Phyllis. Do they not get her? Well, it's just that Phyllis feels her nose is pushed out, so she's up to every trick in the book to make sure Gina knows who's boss. Oh, no. What? Well, it's just that some of our customers are likely to inflame the situation more than others. Now, before I place me order, I would like to know if you two ladies have sorted out your responsibilities because we don't want the hardy party we had last time. She knows her responsibilities. Sandwiches are her responsibilities. And washing up's yours? Washing up and serving on. Oh, so what would you like, Mr. Sugden? Washing and serving, she can do it. Now, come on, don't let's lower the tone. Oh, take me another sort of person. He'd know her like I do. Charming. Well, if you have sorted out your differences, I'd like a cup of tea, please, and a toasted tea cake. I'll do it just as you like it. Nice and crispy on the top. Love. She'll sit on your knee and serve it to you as well. Don't you be <laughs> cheeky. I thought you were ignoring me. I am. Percy, go and sit down, love, and I'll bring it to you. With a rose between her teeth and her ankles showing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Percy. Morning, ladies. Hello, Percy. Hello, Percy. 
Well, if it comes to a fight to the death, my mum is on Phyllis. I mean, I know Gina's got you for her sign, but Phyllis has got the experience. Mm, but my mum is already on Gina, isn't it? Mm. I mean, with this delivery service, I can hardly send Phyllis out on a bike. Oh! <laughs> oh, you've got to tell me if you do. I'd love to see that, really. Yeah, but if Phyllis <laughs> does push it, so that one of them has to go. Oh, Gina. I'd have no choice, would I? I expect you. Oh, I remembered it one of the days when you came home. Thought I'd try and catch you. Mm. Yeah? You want to talk about me dad, don't you? Jenny, it'd be easier to forget my own name than to forget what you said oh, last it's night. It's not fair, Rita. All right, I shouldn't have said anything. But it's not fair when you just keep going on about it. Look, I don't want to talk about it and I'm not going to. You're old enough to appreciate the position you've put me in. I mean, you suggested your father might be seeing another woman. I never mentioned another You suggested. Woman. You suggested it. Now, put yourself in my shoes. How do you think I feel? What do you think's been going through my head all morning? This is the nearest I've had to a proper family. You and me dad. I mean, me big man's going to go and spoil it all, aren't I? Not necessarily. You could just be saving it. Just throw him out? No. Of course you would. Credit me with a bit of sense. I'd at least want to talk to him first, find out why and everything. You promise? I promise that throwing him out is the last thing I want. Is this something you've heard from somebody else? Yeah. Somebody around here? No, a friend at school. And what, she's, uh, she's seen Alan out with this woman? No. Well, what then? Him calling on her? Well, how often? Just now and then, or what? I don't know. Where does this woman live? Come on, Jenny, last question this. Where does this woman live? Oh, Wood Road. Thank you. Hey, have you seen your mother? Not to talk to, no. She was off like a shot when the factory buzzer went. She's come to the building society, then? I suppose so. Great. Yeah. Do you want a pint? No, I better make it a shandy. I'm driving Mr. Baldwin this afternoon. Oh, shandy's Mr. Baldwin. Taking it all a bit serious, aren't we? Well, it's a job, isn't it? I understand. I mean, we can't all be men of means, can we? Building Society is in the precinct, is it? Yeah. What do you reckon? Ten minutes there, ten minutes back? About that. It can't be that long, mate, can't you? Hello, Mrs. Fairclough. Alan, not in? Uh, no, no, he's gone out. Oh, where is he? Uh, he's just gone out somewhere. Well, I gathered that. Where is he exactly? Well, he had a few calls to make and he said he'd be back when he made them. Oh. Does he not have a dinner hour? Well, not as such, no. I suppose it depends on how he's fixed. Mm. I mean, you've got to be flexible, haven't you? Oh, you have. Are these your uh, customers? Oh, yeah. Well, they're all the inquiries we've had. Ah. And then with the red stars on where we actually got the job. I see. Is there something I can help you with, Mrs. Fairclough? No, thanks, Martin. You've been very helpful as it is. All this not knowing where Alan is, what time we'll be back. Not much of a way to run a business, is it? Sorry, I'm not with you. Four marks for loyalty, though. Just a pity it's a bit late. Because if we're being honest, I think we both know where Alan is. Don't we? Where is she then? Don't ask me. I told her to bring it to the rovers to us at dinner time. Did you, Daniel? You heard me? Yes. Oh, so what the hell's happened? You'll be going back over to 
accident. Not really, no. Look, in two minutes' time, I've got to drive Mr. Baldwin to Bradford. Oh, you can slip over, see what's happened. No, I can't. Oh, no, on, no, if I go over there now, they're all going to start nagging me over little bits of job. But you're just going to see each other at tea time. You've waited this long. What's another couple of hours, eh? Hey, boss. Yeah. Can I disappear for ten minutes? Thank you, love. It's a new act, Jack, instead of the singing. <laughs> Go on, then. I can always use a good illusionist. No, 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 no. I mean, can I never wait to the fact you have a word with the missus? Ah, well, no, you know, I don't like you discussing domestic issues in working hours. No, 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 no it's, it's not like that. Do you remember that check I asked you to cash for me? Well, how about Vera when you cashed it? And I don't like the thought of her walking about with a load of money. In case she spends it? No, in case somebody decides to have a go at him. Well, nobody knows better than you, Alec, the dangers of walking about with a bank full of money. Well, I don't think you, uh, you need really worry about that, Jack. I mean, any self-respecting mugger would think twice before taking your veer on. I mean, she's hardly a soft target, is she? <laughs> now, would you mind going and grabbing some of those empty glasses? Folks seem to be collecting them as alibis, just to prove they had a drink, even if it were two hours ago. Right. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Here we are, Mavis. Oh, there. Uh, so oh, put that there. Now, anything there, take your fancy. Well, I mean, it just depends how much we want to spend and how long we want to go for. Mavis, money is no object. Oh. Anyway, I only picked up the cheaper brochures. Well, I think... Are we going for, for one week or two weeks? Well, Mavis, I've never been one for long holidays. Oh, I know this is our honeymoon we're talking about, not, not, a, not just any old holiday. Well, yes. Even so, time can hang heavy. So a week. I think it's probably sufficient. I mean, your honeymoon, then? Yes, sir, uh, trying to decide where to go. Somewhere quiet, I think. Well, quiet-ish, though with places of interest to hand. Uh, my preference is, uh... Yorkshire Moors, in a caravan. Well, it will be November. No distraction. Just a few sheep. Could even take your own ale up, couldn't you? Oh, thank you, Mr <laughs> Duckworth. We'll keep your suggestions in mind. Long nights in November, too. Look, we'll take these with us. Look at them later. If you're looking for something to do, you can clean that stuff. I'm having my break. You can have it afterwards. I'm having it now. Oh, it's beneath you, is it? A bit of cleaning. Well, that attitude won't get you anywhere. Look, what is it with you, eh? Do you hate everybody? Or is it just because they haven't got a blue rinse or what? Oh, we're getting personal, are we? Yeah, I am getting personal because this is personal. It's been personal since I walked in here. Well, I could see straight through you, you know. You've got too much help, that's your trouble. I don't have to put up with this, you know. Oh, I'm sure you don't. I'm sure you can get all sorts of orders on that bicycle of yours. Right, that's it. I'm going to wait till Gail gets back. I'm going to tell her I can't stand working with you a minute longer and I shall tell her exactly what I think of you as well. Well, it's a free country. Yeah. Well, no, Mrs. Roberts. What uh, can I do for I you? I promised to give our Gail this recipe. Oh, she's just popped out. Would you like to leave it? Yes, yes, I will. Oh. Uh, your little friend doesn't sound very happy. She's eh? no friend of mine, and it sounds like she won't be here much longer. No. She reckons she's waiting for Gail to come back to tell her that she won't work alongside me. Well, we both know what Gail has said to that, don't we? Phyllis. What, no. Do you mind if I give you a bit of advice? And if I join you? Yeah, I do. Oh, I can't blame you, Rhoda, as I've been carrying on lately. Go on, have a nice fresh cup of tea. No. You can choose which one you want, then you'll know I've not poisoned it. Oh, oh give us a smile, it won't hurt. No. Do you know, I reckon you and me could become best of friends if we tried. 
Is this your idea of a joke or something? Are you schizophrenic as well as everything else? I don't know, but I'll tell you. A lad miss I've been a bit critical. No. You haven't been critical. Just downright nasty. That's what you've been. Oh, well, I was frightened of you coming here and taking over my job and leaving me with note. You'll be all right now then, won't you? Listen, love. Don't say anything to Gail about you not wanting to work beside me. I mean, it'll be different in future, I promise. Oh, is that it? What? Don't tell Gail. Is that what's behind all this? Why can't we be friends performance? You don't want Gail to know I'm leaving because of you. Well, if you want to know the truth, no, I don't. Well, that's too bad, isn't it? Oh. oh. This is what you get up to when I turn me back. Well, it was quiet, you know. Only Mama's been in. She's left you the recipe on there. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hey, you get me shot. If girl thinks I've upset you, don't say anything, love. I'd never get another job at my age, would I? Please. You should have thought of that before, shouldn't you? Don't say that, no. Oh. Do you know, I was just going to have my cup of tea and then clean the stove. Okay, we'll finish it off first. There's no rush. Oh. Phyllis and me have been falling out. No? Oh. She reckons we should swap jobs. She wants to go on the bike. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you'd have to put more wheels on so I wouldn't be falling over. I think it'd be best if we all just stuck to the jobs we've got. Don't you? Yes, yeah, so do I. Go on, then. Got mine yet? Not yet, love. I still wish I hadn't said anything, you know. Oh, well, you needn't. I'd have found out sooner or later. At least this way I've had a bit of a chance to think about it. But if he says he's sorry and he promises not to see her Jenny, again... Jenny, you'll have to leave this to me and Alan to sort out. But you don't mind if I'm not here for my tea, do you? Well, Louisa said I could go round to their place. No, of course I don't. I suppose it's a bit obvious I'm keeping out the way, isn't it? Just a bit. Mm. Can't say I blame you. I'll just get changed then, then I'll go. I meant what I said before, though, Rita, about this being the only real family I've had. I know. I couldn't bear to think I'd done anything to break it up. You haven't, love. And if I can help it, I won't do anything either. Have you seen her? He's here, she's here. I'm here. Where have you flipping been all day? Have you been to the building society? Yes, I have. Have you got it? I've got it. Do you know, you're beautiful. You're the most beautiful woman in all the world. Well, you are when you've got his cash in your handbag. Yeah, <laughs> right, come on. Let's get sat down. Let's be seeing the colour of your money. I, uh, <laughs> I take it you're not thinking of donating yours to charity, then? You can donate your bit if you like, Terence. Yeah, well, the only people he's ever donated out to is the betting shops and the publicans. <laughs> it's these folk like me that keep the economy of this country turning over. Now, come on, love. Right. <coughs> well, look. I've drew 600 quid out. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got some... Uh, Got some tens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that's one, yeah. two, three, four. Right, oh. ah, that's fifty quid. I'll take that, Shella. That's me out of it then. Keeps your arithmetic simple, doesn't it? Oh. All right, all right, all right. Got some vibes. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Oh, hang on. No, two of them were mine. I just remembered. No, that had before. Oh. So that's. Six, and that's 30 quid. Yeah. So that's 15 for you, 15 for me. <laughs> and? Well, that's all that we're left. What do you mean, that's all we're left? You know, when I, when I got the microwave and the uh, washing machine and bed. Oh dear. You're talking about micro microwave washing the machine. The microwave is going to make my life a lot easier. And the washing machine that's also going to make my life a lot easier. And the bed that's going to stop you moaning. Because it's that lumpy thing up there that keeps giving you all them twinges that you keep complaining about. Spent me money. Our money. And I've spent it on things that are going to benefit us. Knowing full well if it had been up to you, he'd have chucked it away out. Dogs or, or bulls or... Spent all me money. Well, you thought it right thing, didn't you? Well, I can see your point of view, yeah. yeah. She spent it. Well, I don't think my dad can. Uh, what are you doing? 
I'm going out. Don't forget your 15 quid. The reason I'm going out is if I stop here, I won't be responsible for my actions. Hey, now, hang on! No, just leave him. Just let him go. Well, I can see you need a bit of time to get used to that idea. Yeah. About ten years, I'd say. I gather you came into the uh, into the yard today. Yeah. Was out on a job. Down Oakwood Road. Yes, I was actually. Let's not play games. You've been seeing another woman. A Mrs. Burns, according to Card, I saw. I have here. Yeah. Now we know. I've been seeing her for some time, actually. She's a, she's a woman on her own. I don't want to know that. No. No one else supposed to do. Uh, but you want to know why, don't you? Of course I want to know why. Okay, uh... See, I've always felt about you, Rita, that... I don't know. That you've always kept me at arm's length. Oh, up, Look, please, let me finish, eh? Now, I know that you let me move into your house. I know that you've been like a mother to Jenny, but... I've always got the feeling that you've been holding back. Your Mrs. Burns doesn't hold back. I'm not talking about Mrs. Burns. We're talking about you and me. Do you know, you've always made me feel as though I should be grateful for any little bit of affection you've ever given me. Do you know that? Almost as though, I don't know, it's almost as though you begrudged it. Just a minute, you. Look, wait. No, just... you wait. You've been having an affair, and you're trying to make me feel guilty about no. it. Trying to suggest it's my fault. No. All this crap about holding back. Look, I wanted to marry you. You remember? I set it all up. Yeah, behind me back. I made it common knowledge I wanted to marry you. And you made it common knowledge you weren't interested. You humiliated me, Rita. Oh. Do you know that? Oh, so this affair is your revenge. Is that what you're saying? No. This affair is your no. revenge. This affair happened. Because I wasn't committed to anybody else. I wanted to be. But you wouldn't let me. So you went looking for somebody else. I didn't go looking for anything. It just happened. And it happened, Rita, because of the way you are. Well, I'm sorry I can't be any different. More like your Mrs. Burns. So am I. Anyway, yeah. One thing's for sure, I can't, uh, I can't stop on in this house any longer. You're the one that's saying that. Yeah. Yeah, of course I am. Like I'm the one that's had to say everything. Like I'm the one that always said I love you because you never did. Like I'm the one that said, will you marry me and got told no. Well, now I'm saying, Rita, Yes, I'm saying that I think I ought to move out. And there's no sense in prolonging the agony. I'll, uh, I'll pack a few things for tonight and uh, we'll sort it all out tomorrow in the cold light of day. When I sold him, I'd blown his insurance money on a microwave, washer and a bed. I thought it was going to explode. <laughs> well, I don't see why. I mean, he's going to get benefit off it as well as you, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, well, you try telling him that. Especially at Ben. Eh? Well, I mean, you've been mourning that, that whole thing of yours for ages, yeah. haven't you? Yeah, well, we're good reason. Do you know how our milkman's are sleep on that thing? Be like kipping on a bag of nutty slack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a just chill. 
I mean, all it takes is a good night's sleep to put a man to rights, love. Yeah. She's not the only one to get a good night's sleep, either. How do you mean? Well, he's playing his trump card, isn't he? Withdrawing his myrtle rights. <laughs> Hey, uh, Donald, you're pushing the boat out tonight, aren't you? Much more of that stuff, you'll be changing colour. Yeah, well, some of us have to work for a living, Alex, and I'm due to start in 20 minutes. But are you sure you want to have one? So I feel as I'm quite sure. I don't care who's round it is, Jack. You know, I don't encourage drinking on the job. Ah, that's a pity, because she told me to include you and all. You're adopted. Straight up, anything he wants, she said. She reckons it's down to you that she got her hands on this insurance money. If you'd cast that cheque for Jack, she wouldn't have seen any of it, would she? In that case, I'll, uh, I'll have an Irish. <laughs> a large one, I think, in the circumstances. 144. Uh, thank you, Vera. Very much appreciated. Oh, that pleasure, believe me. Now then, maybe, <coughs> what'll it be? Well, do you think we have time? I mean, if we're going to pop into Rita. Oh, yes, I do. It's not every day you decide on your honeymoon, is it? Oh, where are you going then? Oh, well, look, we can't tell you, not just yet. We haven't booked it yet. Oh, but you have made your mind. We have. Well, we think. We have, if it's available, like the hotel at the time we want to go. Oh, I'm sure it will be, Mavis. It doesn't close down, you know, at the end of October. Uh, what doesn't? Paris. Oh, Paris. Oh, Derek. You might as well shout it from the rooftops. It, uh, did I hear somebody say Paris? <laughs> yes, it's where we're going for our honeymoon. Oh, yes. Paris in the spring, you can't beat it. Uh, it'll be November when we're going, actually. Oh, yes, November. Yes. So the best time of the year for some things. <laughs> I take it it's your usual half of bitter and a grapefruit juice. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Gilroy. Gloria. Oh? You know, deciding on a honeymoon is a big step, isn't it? It'll be the first step we take together in our marital state, after all. Well, you know, I really feel like throwing caution to the winds tonight. <laughs> and why not? <laughs> Hold hard, Gloria. <laughs> So what, uh, what have you decided upon? Uh, well, uh, grapefruit juice for Mavis, and I'll have um, a pint of bitter. As you were, Gloria. Jenny. Hello, then. He is, and he won't be back. Not tonight, anyway. What have you said to him? I didn't get much chance to say anything. The moment I told him I knew about this other woman, he just flared up. He gave me a right mouthful. According to him, it was me that drove him to her. The way I treated him, my so attitude... So you just chucked him out? Well, it's all very much, Rita. You said you weren't going to do anything to break us up. You've done a smashing job, haven't you? I didn't chuck him out. He walked out on me. You don't understand Look, him. I understand that my dad's gone. And you did nothing to stop him. And as far as we know, he might not be coming back. It was about me, I take it. Eh? The bus stop. Well, let's just say uh, knowing about you didn't help matters. Yes, it didn't. I was in two minds whether to come here, you know. I was thinking of going to a private hotel or somewhere. I've never forgiven you if you had. You don't mind that? Huh? What do you think? Unless you were thinking of taking off again first thing in the morning. No danger. Well then, where else would you go? Well, I could have phoned you, I suppose, instead of, uh, you know, just landing up in your jail stick. And why would you want to do that? Oh, you know, uh, you'd be trying to get the, uh, get the spare bed made up. I don't think we'll be needing that, do you? Come here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, sorry, it's a bit late, but uh, Derek and I have just got a little favour to ask you. Oh, come on through. Thank you. We just, um, would the dip it be all right for me to take an hour off in the morning just so that uh, Derek and I can go and uh, book our honeymoon? I mean, I'll do the papers first thing and uh, I'll wait till you get in, of course. But, um, well, I wondered if ten o'clock could be all right. Give me a chance to go through the mail, <laughs> fix the diary, put the girls to work. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Well, don't you want to know where we're going? To a travel agent, I should imagine. <laughs> no, for our honeymoon. <laughs> Well, I'm sure that's a little secret you'll want to keep to yourself, Derek. No doubt you'll tell us all about it when you come back. Well, seeing as somebody not a million miles away has already blurted it out in the Rovers tonight, you must be about the only person around here who doesn't know. We're going to Paris, actually. Paris? France. Yes, Derek, I know where Paris is. <laughs> is it all right, then, for tomorrow? Yes, Mavis, that's fine. 
Well, we'll be off then. Come on, Derek. See you in the morning. Yeah. Oh, Rita, I think you ought to get an early night. Looking a bit under the weather. I'd much rather do it by myself, as I've been telling Mr. Thugden. Oh, I see. That's it. If he gets wind of anyone else helping, he'll take the off. Yes, I'm afraid he will. He drew up a timetable that British Rail would have been proud of when he knew I was doing the reception. <laughs> I managed to get away with him agreeing just to make the cake as a wedding present. Oh, that'll cost him a bit. Oh, it won't, you know. He's not paying for the ingredients. He's just contributing his expertise, which, according to Mr. Sugden, is priceless. God, is there anything he didn't do in the Western Desert? Don't ask. <laughs> Anyway, if you do find out things are getting on top of you, you know where I am. Yes, thanks. So I don't love down to that ball club, you're going on like a dripping tap. They really do. Oh, hello. I didn't realise you had company. No, don't mind me. I'm just off. I just called in to see if... Um, I... If I'd finished with a knitting pattern. Ah, right. Oh, yes. uh, I'll go and put the milk on. I take it you haven't had your cocoa yet. Uh, no, no, I haven't. Well, I'll say good night to you, Councillor Mrs Barlow. Good night, Percy. Good night. Cocoa. Every night. 2200 hours. Ah, yeah, I care the other half lives. <laughs> See you, love. Yes, good night. And thanks. Okay. If it's all the same to you, I don't think I'll bother with any cocoa tonight, Mr. Sugden. I've just had a cup of tea with Deirdre. Oh, I quite understand. Uh, too much liquid at this time of night, and, uh, well, you'll be running to that bathroom all night, won't you? I simply want an early night. Mr. Brennan woke me up when he got home from work this morning, and I never seem to get off again properly. John Brennan did. I heard his car door slam. Oh, yes, that I see what you mean. Yes, it sounds like a raffle crack at half past two in the morning, doesn't it? Well, it's not his fault. He has a job to do. No, but it could be a bit more considerate, couldn't he? I mean, he's not fussy where he parts that cover of it, neither. Right across front of your house again it was this morning. It doesn't matter, really. Not to you, Mrs Bishop, but some people uh, take advantage. They see it as a weakness, you know. Can you smell anything? Oh, the milk. See what he's made me do now. It's past midnight, you know. Yes, I know. You come to bed? I don't think I'd sleep if I did. I'm sorry, Rita. Oh, oh. going on at you like I did, blaming you, wasn't fair. You were upset. I know, but it was wrong of me. What did he say to me, Dad? To knock the stuffing out you like I did. He said uh, I'd always kept him at arm's length. He said I, I'd always made him feel grateful for any bit of affection I'd ever shown him. How could he say that? You've, you've given him a home, you, you fetched and carried for him, you've even set him up in business. Well, it wasn't enough for your dad. Seemed he wanted summit else. Summit apparently I couldn't give him. I just don't believe it. Well, he said it all right. No, not that. I don't believe he means it. I mean, people say a lot of things they don't mean when they're on the defensive, don't they? Perhaps he'll see things differently in the morning, eh? He's had time to think about it. You can't mean all the things he said, Rita. I know he can't. Sounded pretty convincing to me. This is all my fault, isn't it? Your fault? If it just kept me trapped shut, none of this would have happened and we'd still be together, wouldn't we? And he'd still have his fancy woman and go on cheating us. Is that what you wanted? I don't know. We will come back, won't he, Rita? Well, that's, that's down to him now, love it. <laughs> Messages. A couple on the third. I'll ring him back now, I think. Oh, you won't be able to get hold of Frank's story. He's out all day. He said he'd give you the bell at home later. Well, that could be difficult. Hey? Still, I'll catch up with him sooner or later, I suppose. Can you 
can't ring you at home. Not a breach as he can't, no. Nor can anyone else for that matter. Mm. I'm not there anymore, am I? Martin, before you say anything you're going to regret, why don't you get the car loaded up, eh? So, uh, where can folk get hold of you then? You know, for business reasons. Well, they've always been able to get hold of me for business reasons here. Hello. Hello. Oh, take it you've got big stop. We then. certainly did. I'm sorry we're a bit later than we'd hoped, Rita, but the travel agent was ever so helpful. Once you knew we really wanted to book and we weren't just a casual inquiry. Oh, yeah. Still going to Paris, I take it. We certainly are. Charming little place, just off the Champs d'Elysees. Mm -hmm. I've got the brochures here. Uh, well, perhaps I could have a look at them later. I really should be getting back. Oh, well, if you have to. Yes, I, I do, I'm afraid. I, uh, see you later. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. But everything's within easy walking distance. There's the Eiffel Tower there, look, and the Arc de Triomphe and the Louvre. And, oh, and you can get these boats that take you down the Seine while you dine till you get to Notre Dame. No. Oh, damn. Oh, <laughs> not Notre Dame. Oh, Derek, it's going to be so romantic. The honeymoon of a lifetime, maybe, so I promise you. <laughs> you haven't been to Paris, Rita? No, no, I haven't. Mind you, I've got a feeling by the time Mavis finishes, I'll uh, know every inch of place. Yes. Well, you might feel like going yourself, you know, just for a short break. Just you and Alan. Jenny can look after herself for a few days. Yeah, I'm sure she can. Look, if you stop in, I'll put Kettle on. Oh, it? not for me, thanks, Rita. I have to be going. Oh. I'll see you later, Mavis. Oh, au revoir, Derek. Au revoir, Mavis. <laughs> <laughs> Just be sound the cellar, will oh. Jack! Where are you disappearing to at the speed of light? I was just going to check a few things down the cellar, Ollie. Not before you've served Mrs. Brennan and your lady wife. Oh, Ollie, please. Don't make me serve that woman the way I'm feeling at the moment. I won't be responsible for my actions. Customers, Jack. Come on, here you are. What? Two hours of lager, please, uh. Jack. I ain't the cum. They wash the machine in my microwave about half an hour ago. <laughs> she say so much. Ooh. You know you're trying to do your best for your family, don't you? You're trying to improve quality of the life. And what do you get, eh? <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> oh, no, love. Are you only one? No, not for me. I'm not stopping. But I thought you couldn't have your dinner wheels. No, I made myself some beans on toast. Look, I'm off to work. Work? I got a chance to swap with Eric, so I took it, didn't I? Look, I'm sitting out at home for a change. Oh. Are you sure you won't have one? Yeah, I'm positive. Look, I'm on my way, uh, so uh, I'll see you. OK. What did you do for Uncle Percy, Rosamond Street? Look, there wouldn't be any need for this. We <laughs> both disposed of the litter with a bit more consideration for others. That seems to be someone who's going out of fashion round here. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know about that. No, oh, no, you wouldn't, would you? Huh? Well, it's not very considerate of you, is it? Banging your car doors at all hours of the night when folk are trying to get some sleep. Well, I'm very sorry, I'm sure. Perhaps you'd like me to park up the other end of town and tiptoe down here in my stocking feet. There's no need for that attitude. I'm just saying this would be a happier world if folk had a bit more consideration for each other. Yeah, well, in my book, a bit less of this into other folk's business and the world would be an happier place. And another thing, park your car outside your own house in future, will you? Who's in front of me on that? I beg your pardon, there's at least two foot in front of Mrs. Bishop's. This may come as a surprise to you, Percy, but I do not go around with a flaming tape measure at half past two in the morning. Now, if you've no better to do with your time than count flagstones, I have. Bye. Bye. Bye, Rita. She's a dark horse, this assistant of yours. Paris, for only moon. <laughs> Perhaps it wouldn't strike me it were your scene, Mavis. I don't see why not. It's full of culture and history. It's a nightlife I'm on about. Ooh la la! <laughs> I can well imagine. Mind you, I didn't rent it much for any moves. You what? Where you were raving about it. I know, but I had to take Alfie with me, didn't I? <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Ta -da. Ta -da. Bye bye. Ah. She's a case, that one. She'll never alter. Yes, well, I don't find her very amusing. I mean, I thought all that business between Mr. Roberts and that Canadian friend of hers was quite disgraceful, and it was all her fault, by all accounts. Well, I felt very sorry for Mr. Roberts, and I know Rita did too, didn't you, Rita? Well, if you don't mind, I'll have an early night. It's been a long day. Well, I'm not surprised you hardly had any dinner hour. Right. See you later. Sit down, love. Bye-bye. Yes, 
Yeah, she all right. I think she's just a bit under the weather. And... Well, I, I just think it's a testing time for her. Testing time? Yes, with my wedding coming up. I mean, she had the chance to get married again, didn't she? And she turned it down now. I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't getting to her now. Hi, Jenny. Is that in there? Yeah. Listen. You all right? So, uh, anyway, Fine, why? I just well, wondered, you know, in view of what's happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, Nothing we can't handle. Because I know Atherton's do it cheaper, but I mean... Uh, I mean, you know, what do you get for your money? Exactly, yeah. Listen, listen I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll knock off 25 quid, I'll say. Okay, okay, you got yourself a deal, yeah. I'll call you later on in the week and we'll fix up a time. Okay. Yep. Bye bye now. See, business isn't suffering. Why should it be? Jenny, if you've come here to talk me into going back to Rita, you're wasting your time. Why did you do it, Dad? She wasn't going to chuck you out or anything like that. She was hurt, yeah? Who can blame her? But letting up, that was the last thing she wanted. You wouldn't understand, Jenny. I understand you've watched out on Rita. You've watched out on me, Dad. Well, I'm sorry about that. I really am. But it's for the best, believe me. If you two could just get together and talk about it. It wouldn't change anything, Jenny. Look, I'm... I'm sorry to have to end like this, I really am. But one thing you've got to understand is it's not all my fault. Nobody could have tried harder than I did to make a go of it with Rita. But everything I did seemed to get thrown back in my face. That is not true, Dad. Well, it was the way I saw it. Look, if you just get together, just meet Rita and talk it over. There's nothing to talk about. As far as I'm concerned, Jenny, it's over. <sighs> that's what you told your fancy woman, is it? I don't think that's anything to do with you. That is where you're stopping, I take it. No, look. I've got a right I to don't... know where you're stopping, have now. You're still my dad. You can get me here, can't you? You did go around to her, didn't you? That is where you went. Look, I've it. told you, it's none of your business. Like it was none of my business before. When you and my mum split up. Yeah, well, I might not have understood then. Because I was too young. But I'm not too young to understand now, Dad. I'm not too young to understand what you're doing to Rita. To me. I'm not too young to understand what a bastard you really are. You what? Jenny! Yes, Paul. Um, two medium sherries and half a bitter, please, barman. Hey, you know, it grieves me to see you. I beg your pardon? How any sane adult can contemplate married life with a smile on his face in my book, he won't certify it. In your book, maybe. But I happen to be looking forward to married life with Miss Riley. Now, uh, you're going to serve me two medium sherries, or are you not? Uh, Gloria, would you come and attend to Mr. Wilton's requirements? Oh. Jack. I suppose we're done now, Ollie. Nothing you haven't been doing for the past 24 hours getting right up my nose. No, how would you feel if better taken you for a ride and, and betrayed your trust? Bet wouldn't, Sunshine. And I wouldn't be taken for a mug like you did. A mug, me? Yes, you. They have a cheque for 600 quid in your sticky little paw, made out to you, and who ends up with it? Your beerer. You were a mug, Jack. A fool. You handed it to her on a plate. Well, that's your privilege. If you want to announce it to the entire world, that's your privilege as well. But you are not doing it on these premises and upsetting my punters anymore. Got it? You know, I'll swing for that woman one day, so help me. I uh, said, got it? Yes, I like. Good. Well, now we understand each other. Do carry on, Jack. And Jack. Yes, Al, what can I do for you? please. Or this. Gin and tonic, please. Some at all? Up. Seems to be amusing you. Amusing me? Honestly, I'm just trying to be pleasant. Oh, well, that's likely why we didn't recognise you. <laughs> God, I can't flaming win, can I? Not working tonight, then. No, I did a swap, got tonight off, so uh, I won't be disturbing your beauty sleep tonight. Sorry? Well, Percy Sugden tells me you can't sleep nights, and I can't me coming home at all hours. That's not strictly true. I mean, I have heard you a couple of times, but I'd hardly call it a major problem. Come on now, you know what Percy Sugden is. Best way to treat him is to ignore him. He's never right unless he's going on about summer. Yeah, well, I'll try and be a bit quieter in future, honest. I wish I could find somewhere to get my cab round the back, under Percy's room. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Bye.
How that woman puts up with a fella like him under the roof, I'll never know. You know, I reckon you probably said to Tom at night saying the same thing about us. Ah, uh, cheeky. <laughs> what the? What's up? Well, come and have a look. Who's the extra on that? Sergeant Major Flaming Sugden, who else? He was on about me back in here this morning. Well, aren't you going to see him? What for? Well, you're not going to let him get away with that, surely? No. No, I'm not going to let him get away with it. But I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of knowing that it bothers me either. I'll think of something. He was right, you know. What he said. I've had all day to try and see things from his point of view for a change. That's something I've not bothered to do before. Now, don't go blaming yourself. Look, it weren't right the way he walked out of here. It weren't right him taking up with that other woman. No, it weren't. If you two could just get together and talk it out between you. I don't reckon there'd be much point, love. Tell me something. What? Do you want him back? Well, do you? I don't know. I don't know where I want anymore. Yes. I suppose I do. What's the point? Made it pretty clear he don't want me. Now, I don't believe that. Not after what the two of you have gone between you. Oh, you didn't see Moody Wren last night? No. That's see what he's like today. Have you been to see him? Well, don't sound so surprised. He is my dad. How did he see him? Oh. Confused. Mixed up. Well, that's not the impression I got last night when he walked out of here. Seemed to know exactly what he was doing and where he was going. Hey, now, look, if you think he went straight round there, then... Where else would he go? Well, to a mate's. That was the impression I got. Look, people say a lot of things in the heat of the moment that they just don't mean. If you two could just get together and talk about it. You know, all it needs is for one of you to swallow your pride and make the first move. Is that what you reckon? It is. Honest. He knows where I am, don't he? Morning. Morning. You're back early. Well, early anyway. Rita! You've come on the wrong morning. It's my day for early turn. Did you forget? No, I didn't forget. What are you doing here then? It's only quarter past seven. I know, I know. I wanted to get out at the house. Been awake for hours anyway. Oh, is something wrong? Well, I should have told you before. I don't really know why I kept it from you. What? Me and Alan, we've split up. Oh, no, I don't believe it. Well, we have. Oh, when? I mean, what happened? Oh, a couple of nights ago. We had a blazing row and he walked out at the end of it. Oh, Rita. Oh, I should have noticed that there was something wrong. Well, come to think of it, I've been a bit subdued lately, but... Well, I've just been so full with all the wedding arrangements and everything. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. Not your fault. Well, you always seem sort of indestructible, you and Alan. <laughs> well, what's it all about? Combination of things. It's uh, It's been building up for a while, really. Oh, well, I wish you'd told me. I mean, I had no idea things were going wrong. Well, you were so happy. You and Derek, looking forward to your wedding. Didn't want for a dampener on that. And anyway, I, I was hoping things had straightened themselves out. Say, all came to a head. Alan walked out, and uh, I didn't tell you yesterday because I suppose I was hoping he'd come back. Well, perhaps he will, Reed. Oh, yes, I'm sure he will. I doubt it. I mean, if he'd just been temporary, he'd have been back by now. Oh, it's over, maybe. No, don't say that, Rita. Well, where is Alan? Do you know where he's living? I don't know. To be honest, I don't think I care. Look, I'll just mark these papers up. 
Pain's still wet and all. This is recent, is this? You know who's responsible for this, don't you? Indeed, I do, Mr. Sugden. You? No, no, him next door. That don't, uh, whatever he's called, I'm going to tell it. Mr. Sugden, Mr. Brennan is far too sensible to get involved in childish tricks like this. And this is all your fault for painting on the pavement in the first place. I want it removed, Mr. Sugden, the whole thing. Do you understand me? All of it. I want every mark of paint off my pavement. Yes, your pavement, that's the old point. That's why I put no parking. Off, Mr. Thugden. I will brook no argument. No, I can understand you being upset. I mean, this is, there's no truth in this at all. You and all knows it, Parker. Not in my book. And never anybody ever said you were. It's not aimed at me, Mr. Thugden. It's aimed at you. No, I, I wouldn't think so, no. But if that's the way you want to think about it, Mrs. Bishop, so be it. Mr. Sugden, I'm going to work now. When I come back at lunchtime, I want to see my pavement clean. And I want no unseemly recriminations between you and Mr. Brennan or anybody else. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, was that the phone? Uh, yeah, there's been uh, a couple of fellas wanting to go around giving quotes for alarms. Did you get all the details down? It's all down there, yeah. Right, that's all that matters. Oh, Mr Norris from Radley Road. He said you'd uh, promise to go down for this thing. all about it. That's what he reckoned. <laughs> you should be giving me a buzz. I could have gone straight there. It's just around the corner from uh, Oakwood Road. <coughs> are you, uh, are you like based down at Oakwood Road now, then? Yeah, more or less. Mm. So it's all right if I give you a call there, is it? If it's important, yeah. Mm. So it's official, like? I mean, if someone rings, asking If you anybody ring. asks you anything about me, Martin, don't mind their own business, OK? Mm -hmm. Morning, Percy. What are you doing? We've been vandalised. Oh, it's very painful. I don't suppose you or Kenny saw anything. Such as what? Well, somebody with a pot of paint in one hand and a brush in the other. Oh, sorry, Percy, can't help you. See ya. Morning, right, hello. Is this your work? No, thanks, Percy. Work like that, you keep it and welcome. You know what I'm on about. I want a straight answer. What do you to vandalise my no parking notice? Look, Percy, I've got better things to do. I knew you'd deny it. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. If it was me, I'd tell you. Now look, Percy, as far as I'm concerned, you can paint what you like on your pavement. It doesn't bother me. Well, when you come back, the sign might be gone. But I'd thank you to park in front of your own house in future. Oh, yeah, the great these microwaves, you know. You just switch them on and it sends out like these micro shazam things. And do all you want in about, well, a few minutes. I know, you've told us. I haven't told Ken, have I? You want to get your day, Drew, on? Yeah, well, we have thought about getting one, actually. Well, if you're at home all day, I mean, fair enough. But when you're career women, you know, like me and Deirdre are, well, I mean... Career woman? You haven't got a career, you've got a job. Way ball, we were looking at them curtains you made this morning, you're lucky you've got that. Sir. Thank you. Now then, Jack. You and your lady wife on speaking terms again? Yes, we're on speaking terms, Alex. She speaks to me and I tell her, shut up. Do you know, it's absolute madness. You're making a rod for your own back. You're your own worst enemy, Jack. I'm not, Alec. Fear is my worst enemy. It always has been. Oh, no, you don't mean that. I do. Let's face it, I shared my compensation with her, didn't I? I gave her half out of the goodness of my heart when I had no need to do. What did she do? Spend the flaming dots. Yes, the benefit the same as her. I mean, you've got a new bed on order, haven't you? But I don't want a new bed. What the hell do I want a new bed for? I'm going to put this low. If you find yourself stuck with a mouldy pork pie, 
you putting it in a brand new paper bag will not make it any more tasty now, will it? <laughs> oh, um, a medium sherry, please, a small one, and um, half a bitter, please. I'll get the bitter one. Here you buying a drink, sire. It's a little wet a while, and wish all these were cyanide. Pardon? See, you can't see, can you? You've still got your blinkers on, haven't you? See, this is nature's way of putting you in the mire. I expect you say this to everyone who's about to get married. Not everyone, just the fellas. There must be some happy marriages. You've been wed once, haven't you? Now you're at it again. In my opinion, any fella who's been knocked down and lives to tell the tale should be a damn sight more careful next time he's crossing the road. Barman is extremely hostile to marriage as an institution. He seems to think that every married couple are doomed to quarrel. A couple doesn't have to be married to fall out. That's a very brittle remark for you, Mavis. I've got something to tell you. Rita and Alan have split. No. Yeah, tremendous row, apparently. Anyway, he's moved out. That's terrible. I knew he'd be upset. Well, yeah, of course I'm upset, Mavis. I mean, where does it leave us? What do you mean? Oh, come on. Alan was to be my best man. You think they might have waited a week or two? That job in Longfield Road's going to be a swine, you know. That wiring is really old. Well, sell them a rewiring job as well. Hey, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> Good blades as well, you know. All right, when did that happen? You can go for your dinner if you like, Martin. All right. Tell you what, see you at uh, Longfield Road after, okay? Okay. All right, love. All right. How do you think I am? Uh, I'm glad you dropped in because uh, I wanted to see you. Well, if you wanted to see me, come back home. That's where I live. You're not worried about Rita chucking you out, are you? Because uh, if you are. No, you I'm not be... worried about Rita chucking me out. She'll not do that. She's not like that. She's not going to take it out on me for what you've done to all her. All right, all right. All I'm saying is you don't have to feel you're stuck at Rita's. But if you're happy to stay there and she's happy to have you there, I okay, am happy fine. there. But I'd like you there as well, Dad. Look, I've been settled there. I've been happy. It's been like having a proper home for the first time I can remember. Until you ran out on us. Jenny, these things are never as simple and as straightforward as you think they are. You can't have gone off with it completely. You wanted her to marry you not so long ago. But she turned me down, didn't she? Twice. Just as well, I suppose, considering what happened. Look, you can say what you want, Dad, but don't make out this is her fault, because this is yours. This is your doing, not hers. I'm disgusted with you, I really am. And if you ever make me choose between you and Rita, it'd be her every time. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Hello. All right. Oh, well, you go for your lunch now. No need to rush back. I can cope. I shouldn't think I'll be so long. Did you go to Robert? Yes. Uh, was Alan in? No, I wasn't. By the way, Rita, I, um, I told Derek about you and Alan. Well, I had to, you see, because he was expecting him to be a witness mm. at the wedding. But I haven't told anybody else. That's all right. They public knowledge soon enough. I just have to get used to the uh, pitying looks and the tactful remarks. Well, I can stand it. Just. Oh, Mrs. Perk, look, just a lady I wanted to see. Ah, yes, well, see Mavis, will you, because I'm just going for my dinner. Well, really, I wanted to see you in your capacity as the proprietor of this news agent shop. Well, ask Mavis. When I'm not here, she has full power. You go, Rita. Yes, Mr. Sutton. Right, now, in the early hours of this morning, somebody committed an outrage on Mrs. Bishop's section of pavement. Oh, you mean changing the no parking signs and there was a parking? Yes, I heard about that in the Rovers. Did you hear anybody bragging or admitting responsibility? No, I'm sorry, not that I heard, no. No, you see, whoever it was, they're not man enough to own up. Or woman. Oh, I 
I don't think it's a woman's crime, but uh, I've not ruled out the entire possibility of that, but it looks like a man's handiwork to me. Now, if I could get all the suspects to agree to an handwriting test, that would tell us a lot. Look, Mr. Sugton, I know we're not busy in the shop just now, but if you could come to the point... The point is, that paint was still wet at 8.30 this morning, and in my view, the guilty party could have been at his dirty work between the hours of 7 and 8. Now, who was on the paper round in Coronation Street this morning? Was it young Jason? Why do you want to know that? Why? So I can ask him if he's trying to suspicious. Anybody loitering with a paintbrush? No, I'm sorry. I don't want you questioning our paper lads, Mr. Sutton. I always thought you had the same view as me about law and order, Miss Riley. Have I been wrong? No. No, I have, but... Well, even if he did see somebody, it could have been one of our customers, and I don't want to get involved in any bad feeling with a customer. Just a minute, I'm a customer and all, you yes, know. Yes, I know that. Now, if I was an unscrupulous man, Miss Riley, I could remind you at this moment in time I'm asking your wedding cake as a favour, but I'm not, so I won't. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Sugden. I appreciate that. But I'm very disappointed. You won't help me to find out who it was that publicly branded your good friend Emily Bishop as a nosy Parker. It was you they were getting at, Mr. Sugden, not Emily. You know, Mrs. Bishop said that, and all. It's funny how you women get all the wrong end of stick. Something bothering you? What? Well, you're not eating much. Well, uh, <clears throat> I never eat much at lunch now. Yeah, there is something, actually. My daughter. Jenny. Yeah. She came in to see me at the yard this morning, just before dinner. She's siding with Rita against me. Close, are they, yeah? Uh, her and Rita? Yeah, they are, really. See, when, um... When my ex-wife died, which was very good to herself. But, you know, she's not bothered whether I'm happy or not. Oh, Jenny. Do you want a cup I mean, of coffee? Just, uh, no, I've got to get going. Uh, job in Longfield Road. She's all right, Jenny. She's a good kid, actually. I suppose she'll come around in time. Of course she will. Oh. She like you, you know. When she gets to know you. Only right now I'm the wicked lady, am huh. I? Yeah, somewhat like that. Well, if there's a knock on the door and it's a 17-year-old spitting fire, I'll know who it is. She won't do anything like that. She doesn't even know I'm stopping there. But even if she did, she wouldn't bother you. What would we try, actually? She's too much pride for that. Father. Yeah, you should have seen Purse, though, scrubbing away there like a good one. It's not easy to get rid of, you know, this paint. Mm, what I'd like to know is who did the dirty work. You know, who altered his no parking sign to Nosy Parker? Was it you? Would I do a thing like that, Glow? Yeah. Go on, admit it. I won't tell. I won't tell. First girl who ever said that to me. Doreen Lachlan. Seven, she was. I believed her. She told I got the strap. Well, you know, it gave me a good laugh, that Nosy Parker. Now, if I knew who did it, I'll buy my All right, go on. If you can keep your mouth shut, it was me. Seven o'clock this morning in my jam. You would say that now, wouldn't you? I mean, just after a free pint. Hey, no, 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 no. It's right. It was me honest. Honest? <coughs> I can show you my paintbrush. I want no more signs and slogans on my pavement, Mr. Sugden. The famous saying, and it's very true, and all, without eternal vigilance, people take liberties. Now, somebody got up in the night to do that vandalism. I call that the work of a maniac. I never wanted you no parking sign in the first place, or your white paint to mark out my territory. Well, you know what they said, don't you? Good fences make good neighbours. No fences, Mr. Well, Sullivan. it's your pavement. Exactly, it's my pavement. You see, you give them an inch, and before you know it, you are, they're right in front of your house. I've seen all this before, you know, in the 1930s with Italy. First it was the Rhineland, and then Austria. And then, they, eventually, they had to draw the line. Now, that's all I was doing, drawing the line. You've missed a bit. Hiya. Um, I'm just coming to be friends for an hour. You know Margaret, so um, see you about seven, all right? And right. have your tea ready. Don't be late, will you? I won't be. See ya. You go home as well if you like, Rich. I'll hold the thought till we're short. No, no, I'll hang on a bit longer. It's only a few minutes now. Look, do, do you feel like eating with me and Derek tonight? I haven't got anything special in, but I could do a risotto. No, thanks. I'll go home, love. Good oh. oh. yeah. evening. Hello. <laughs> I was just saying we'd be happy to entertain Rita this evening, wouldn't we? Oh, 
I thought we were going to practice our French conversation this evening. <laughs> we're not going to be a typical English abroad when we go to Paris, are we, Mavis? <laughs> Où est le cabinet? Défense de fumée. <laughs> no good going to Paris for your honeymoon if you can't enjoy yourself because you don't speak the language. Yes, well, we can look at the phrase book another night. I, I just thought Rita might be glad of the company. Oh, uh, yes, yes. Yes, of course. Um, yes, you'll be very welcome, Rita. Well, it's very kind of you, but thanks. I'll go home. Jenny will want feed in anyway. I was very sorry to hear about you and Alan. Um, very sorry indeed. I, uh... I don't suppose he'll be coming to the wedding now, will well, he? Well, I shouldn't think so, but uh, I don't know for sure. Look, Mavis, uh, if it's all the same with you, I'll take you up on that offer. If you can manage, I'll, uh, I'll go on. Yeah, sure. She's putting up a brave front, but underneath she's suffering. It's the worst thing that can happen to a woman, isn't it? Losing her man. Good night, Derek. Oh, good night, Rita. Good night. Anyway, we can shut up in ten minutes. We oui, wee. Oui. Wee oui, wee, oui, Mavis. Haven't you been looking at the phrase book at all? It means yes, yes in French. <laughs> yes, I know that, Derek. Took me by surprise, that's all. Oh, Voulez-vous accompagner moi? Oh, um, oh, uh, la maison publique pour un verre de vin à six heures ce soir. Oh, Derek. Oh, Paris with you. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> Jenny? Jenny? What are you going to your friends? It's me. Oh, Alan. I just came back for the rest of my gear. I'll, uh, I'll make it as quick as I can. No, no, it was Emily Bishop, if you ask me. <laughs> don't talk to daft man. Oh, it's always the most unlikely suspect, Percy. Take no notice, Percy. They're only teasing <laughs> Oh, it doesn't worry me, Councillor. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Oh. Hey, Jack! Let's oh. come. Who are you calling scum? No, I'm not calling you daft thing. No, I'm just selling you this new bed. They've just delivered it just now. <laughs> I'm not interested, Vera. Drink, Vera. Ah, go on, the lager dome. Yeah. Miserable beggar. You know, a brand new bed. You think you'd be pleased about it, wouldn't you? You think you'd be thinking of ways to celebrate it? You got my compensation off me by false pretenses. You won't waste it on washing machines, microwave cookers, and now this flaming bed. There was now wrong with the old bed, just a person I had to share it with. Look, as soon as this bed was paid for with your cash, Jack, you want to get your money's worth out of it. Yes, listen to Don, he knows what he's talking about. Evening. Evening. Um, do you do wine by the glass? Oh, yes, red or white. Two glasses of white wine, please. We're trying to get into the mood for wandering down the boulevards, popping into little cafes. Oh, it'll be lovely, Mavis. I wish it was me that was going. Oh, hands off. It's already spoken. Oh, <laughs> Mavis, that was a bit saucy, wasn't it? Well, I'm feeling very happy. But then I think of Rita and I feel all guilty. Why? What about Rita? Oh, well, they parted um, her and Alan, and, and he's moved out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Huh? Yes, it's made it rather difficult. Uh, he was going to be my best man. Now it's rather awkward. I'm wondering who I can get to step into the breach, uh, as it not, were. It's uh, not best man, strictly speaking, is it? Because it's registry office, it's actually a witness. <laughs> no, but you need somebody solid, reliable, trustworthy. Um, would you like a drink, Alf? Eh? Oh, no, no, no. No, uh, I've just remembered I've got something to do, you know, and forget me, and it was loose. <laughs> Sorry, forgot these. Is this what you want? Finish? Oh. You don't think there's anything to talk about? I said it all the other night, didn't I? Is that why you came while I were out? So you wouldn't have to see me? Yes, I thought I'd be in and out before you got back. The idea was to avoid any unpleasantness. I thought it might be less painful all round. Well, you've hurt Jenny. She's very upset. Yes, I know, I know. I've seen Jenny and I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I've hurt anybody's feelings. Well, why can't we talk about it? Because there's nothing to talk about, love. 
Right, I'll get the stuff out of your way. Where are you going? Your girlfriend? You're going to move in with her? Where I'm uh, living now, Rita, is none of your business. Not now. Um, I won't be needing those anymore. Necessarily. Well, not yet, anyway. Oh? No, I suppose some sunny semi in a tree-lined suburb will be the long-term objective. But, as Derek pointed out, there's no sense in rushing out to buy a house just for the sake of it. Not when we've already got accommodation. Oh, I see. So, where will you be living? Then? Oh, well, upstairs for a bit, I expect. Just till we find something we like. <laughs> yeah, well, sounds like good thinking to me. Yes. Well, Derek does seem to have this talent for looking at things from all angles. I mean... I suppose some people would mistake it for indecisiveness, but, well, they don't know him like I do. Quite. Oh, 10 p right. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Nice. Can you hear it? What? That whirling sound. Whirling sound? Yeah. The circular saw of unhoney matrimony get nearer and nearer oh. with every second. <laughs> Just for the record, Mr. Baldwin, I'm quite looking forward to it. <laughs> of course you are. That's the pernicious thing about it, isn't it? What? What willing slaves we are. I mean, I was. Now look at me. A lonely, cynical old bachelor, living in that flat of mine alone with nothing but a couple of old <laughs> mucky videos to keep me... Oh, that'll be the night. <laughs> oh, talking of which, uh, what's the latest on the war front? The war front? Well, haven't you heard? Rita and Alan are splitting up. It's not something I tend to indulge in that, Mr. Baldwin. Tittle-tattle about my closest friend across this counter. Oh, hear no evil, speak no evil. Eh? Yes, that's right. You and the three wise bunkies, eh? Mm, something like that. Now, are you going to take another one out? Well, I better find something. Help me through another lonely night, eh? I'm sure he's going to come back, once things have cooled down a bit. He's already been back. You are? Last night while you were out. You never said. Well, I were asleep when you came back. We're trying to. And? He left these. Then what? He went. And you just led him? Well, what in God's name was I supposed to do? Grab him by the ankles as he was leaving? Go on me bending knees and beg for forgiveness because I don't happen to approve of his bit on the side? Well, go on, Jenny, tell me. What should I have done? Oh, I don't believe this is happening. I just don't believe it. Now then. What's all this? Feels a bit nasty. Call them punchers, you know. Anything I can do? No, not unless you happen to have your puncher kit with you. I, I've just used my last one on my spare tire. Oh dear. Can I uh, phone the A for you? I'm with the RAC myself. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I suppose I'd better nip down to the garage, see if there's anything our Kev can do. Good for the legs, I reckon. Biking. Myself. I've always had good legs. So I've noticed, darling. <laughs> Now then, Dad, you just couldn't drag yourself out of it, could you? What? That new bed my man bought you. Tell me something, Terence. How can you do it, though? What? Stand there, looking your dear old Peter straight in the eye, knowing you've just stabbed him in the back. Oh, come on, Dad. It's only money, you know. Yes, Terence, my money! Take a little bit of money, Bye-bye. Oh, I'm sorry, Martin. Sorry. Can I help you, Martin? Oh, good Lord, no, till this after's coming out of the rain, mate. Don't be so flaming starky. Oh, go on then, I'll have a coffee, please. Oh. Shake or not strap. Very good of you to join us, Phyllis. <laughs> oh, don't you start. Two teams, is it, Frank? Please. Where have you been in any road? 
like bedlam in here for the last half hour. I've been to the doctors to renew a prescription for me feet. Well, you might have told us. I thought I'd only be a minute. They are lovely. Hey, do you know, there were that many in, I thought they'd got a special offer on. And they wrote, where's Gina? I'll get in a puncture, Oh, I wish you'd have told me I'd have done it for her. Do you know I've mended millions of punctures in my time? Mummy, you weren't here, were you, Phyllis? Oh, don't start again. I told you what's happened. Anyway, talking about not being here, could you spare me for half an hour at dinner time? What time, dinner time? Half past twelve. Oh, Phyllis, that's our busiest time, is that? Well, you can't manage to see me any other time. No. Oh. Arnold. I promised to have a drink with him and the rovers at half past twelve. Well then I'm sorry you're going to have to unpromise him, aren't you? Because you were right first time, love. I can't spare you at that time. I just can't. Never did go smooth though, you know, Phyllis. What? Well, the course of true love. Oh, what do you know about it? <laughs> oh. Yes, Mrs. Swift. The magazine, the one on martial arts I get. Yeah. I wanted counselling, thank you. Oh, right. We all need to do our little bit these days to lower the level of violence that goes on. Well, yes, you're right, I suppose. Uh, anything else? Not for now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Look, you go home if you want to. I'm sure I can manage now. I'd do what? Watch the passing wallpaper? No, thanks. I'll live, I think. Oh, I am sorry, Rita. Well, I feel almost guilty, really. You feel guilty? Yeah, but it should all have blown up just now of all times. Hey, one, well, let's just agree on something now. Whatever's happened to me, no way are we going to allow it to spoil your no. big day. I just can't get over the cold-blooded way he's gone about it. Well, then, I shouldn't be surprised, I suppose. Oh? Well, what I mean is... Well, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but it's always had a cruel streak, as Alan, or I've always thought. Shall I tell you something, Mavis? I mean, something really daft. I do mind. So let's just drop it, shall we? Well, I was only saying... I know but... what you were saying. I'm not even saying that you're wrong about him. What I am saying is, just don't say it to me. All right, if you don't mind. Morning. Hello, Derek. Something wrong? It's just that it never does cease to surprise me. What? How people never cease to surprise me. So, uh, what did you have in mind? Some sort of a finger buffet, is that it? That's right. Open sandwiches, volleyball, that sort of thing. Uh, maybe a few pies and pasties in the oven for them as for can't face food unless it's been at least warmed up. That's about it. Oh, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, look, if you need any help... Oh, well, all that I can get, really. Only, I don't want to feel that by helping, I'm treading on Mr. Sugden's toes or anything. Deirdre, feel quite free to tread on whatever part of Mr. Sugden you've a mind to, whenever and wherever the opportunity arises. Get into you again, is he? Oh, I know he's only trying to help in his own peculiarly officious way. Just wish occasionally he'd go and help someone else for a bit. Cheer up, Jack, it might never happen. It happened to me 20-odd years ago, Arnie. On a certain maternity ward, not a million miles away from here. Talking about me again, are we, Peter? Is this something you want, or is that a stupid question? Bitter, right? Uh, yeah, I'll have, uh, I'll have a half, will you? You'll have a pint and you'll like it. Go on, then, I'll have a pint. And for you, Curly. Go on, then, if you push. You got that, did you, Peter? Three pints of your best. Right! Have you been upsetting your old fellow, are you? Who, me? <laughs> oh, and uh, one for yourself. No, thanks. I'm very particular who I upset drinks up. Oh, I since when? It'll be 2.34 to you. Very sorry I can't make it anymore. Oh, ho, ho. Uh, anyone for a thrashing? Middles for diddles? Open money over. Why not? Right, you're on. Hey, let us go for us. Go on, then. Have a get that dirty pot, will you? So that's your lad, then, is it? So I'm told. Is there something troubling you, Jack? Blaming women, innit? Always is. But all the flaming same. Not all of them. All of them, Arnie. Well, not in my experience, any role. Oh, well, if you're so confident about yours, where is she now, then, eh? Supposed to be meeting you half hour ago, wasn't she? Well, obviously, she's been held up, hasn't she? Yeah. By who, though, eh? How do you mean? Well, I thought you might have noticed who was conspicuous by his absence in the pub this dinner. 
Fuck up, Tush. You don't mean Percy Sugden, do you? Oh, oh, don't I? Oh. Don't talk so daft, Jack. She can't stand the fella. Oh, is that what she told you? Aye, I am more than once. Oh, she would, wouldn't she? Look, Jack, what exactly are you suggesting? That there's something going on between Percy Sugden and Mrs. Pierce? Now, look, Arnie, I am just a barman, do you know what I mean? But it is a well-known fact round here that Phyllis Pierce has been playing Scarlet O'Hara to Percy Sugden's rep butler to the past half century. In the past, maybe, but not anymore. <coughs> Not since she met me. Oh, if that's what you say. That's what you say. <laughs> Meals now then, eh? Ah, uh, ho, 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 ho. Hey, no, it's a good sign that you're getting your feet under the table. You know, when they provide you with your own transport. You wouldn't have any chance to be winding up, would you, Mark? Gina, I've never been more serious in all my life. Now, when you get on that bike this afternoon, you shouldn't really treat it as if it's just a bike, you know? Oh, I shouldn't, should I? No, you should treat that bike like it's the bottom rung of your ladder. Hmm. You mean like today two wheels and tomorrow a part? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hmm. I've never thought of it like that before, Mark. Next time I'm saddled, so I remember that will certainly cheer me up. Mm. Well, if anybody should know how to succeed in business without really trying, it's you, Martin. I'm right, doing, Mark? I'm doing all right, mate. Oh, of course you are. I mean, look what happened to him down the yard this morning. Mm, what did happen to him? Oh, and Bradley's only just gone and got him his very own skateboard, complete with personalised <laughs> number plate. <laughs> oh, Mark, you sly cat, you never sly. Well, you know how it is, don't you? <laughs> you don't like to be flash about these things. So anytime you fancy skating on thin ice, I'm your man. On the other hand, if you prefer to travel first class, uh, just give me a shout. Yeah, just make sure Mike Baldwin's not watching first. Hey, Terry. <laughs> um, what's up, now then, Phyllis, lost somebody, have you lost? Arnold, Arnold Swift. I'm supposed to be meeting him, my nigga. He was here not five minutes since. Jack, has Arnold Swift gone? Yeah, just, yeah. Oh. Did he say where he was going? Not to me, love, no, sorry. Hello. And so you should be sorry. Talking to me? Oh, I'm not talking to the cat, am I? Oh, you're evil, you are. Me? And I heard what you said to Arnold just now. Go on, what did I say? Go on, go on, tell me what Listen, I said. it's more a case of what you didn't say. I mean, it's not their fault, you know. Oh, that wife of yours, she's made a monkey of you. You're a snake in the grass. I don't know what she means. Honest. Arnold! Gooey! Arnold! Thank you. So, where is she now then? Oh, still moping about in the back, I expect. Dear me. Still, could have been worse, I suppose. Worse? Well, they could have been married. Oh, Derek, I like to think as far as they were concerned, they were married in all but nay. Mavis. This headache's showing no sign of lifting, so I think I'll go home. Mm, perhaps if you lie down for a bit. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Mm, right, yeah. bye, bye bye. Bye. I just don't know what to do. But it's patently obvious that she's still hoping for some sort of reconciliation. No, most inconsiderate, really. Inconsiderate? Yes, I still think that the least they could have done was to have kept the lid on things. Until after the wedding, anyway. Derek, for goodness sake, these are human beings you're on about, not digits in some computer program. I mean, when this sort of thing blows up, people don't just sit around a table and say, oh, I'll tell you what, we'll split up next Sunday but one, just in case we're discommoding anybody. It's not funny, Mavis. I never said it was. And I'm not getting anywhere, finding another best man. Oh. Derek, at this moment in time, the last thing in my mind is your best man. You may say that now, Mavis, but will you still be so sanguine about it this time next week, when I still haven't found one? Just a minute, though, Derek. Perhaps that's it. That's what's what? The way. The way? The way to bring them together again. What are you talking well, about, Mavis? Rita and Alan, perhaps the thing to do is to do nothing. <laughs> Mavis, I'm still not following this. Yes, well, we're taking it for granted, aren't we, that that Alan is out as your best man. Oh, and a pretty fair assumption, too, I would have thought, given the fact that his live-in lover, who also happens to be your matron of honour, has just kicked him out. But what if we simply leave things as they are? And then, when we get them in the same room together, in the sort of atmosphere that weddings do generate, 
Well, well, who knows what might happen? I'll tell you one thing that might well happen, Mavis, and that's that they end up having a stand-up slanging match and throwing wedding cake over each other. But not necessarily, Derek. Well, nothing would make my day more than knowing that our wedding was instrumental in bringing them together again. Mavis, what? you don't really think Alan will still do it, do you? But I don't know. Perhaps we should ask him. Oh, yes. I do exactly what you mean by we, hmm? Well, I mean, after all, it's your best man we're mm. talking about, not mine. I see. Business is certainly booming here. Hmm. I'll put it down to the deteriorating moral climate of the country myself. The what? Well, either that or the fact that people are getting sick of coming home finding the houses have been turned over. Yeah, but these machines, you didn't think they were any good. What do you mean? Well, every time I pass by one that's going up, there seems to be a lot of people taking no notice. Including yourself, Blake. Right. Hi, hey, Mike. Oh, hi. Oh, I'll get that Martin, will you? How's it going, and all? Never better, never better. Good, glad to hear it. What can I do for you? Oh, that machine of mine, this like burglar alarm, it's taking years off my life. What do you mean? Well, it keeps going off for no reason, four o'clock uh, in the morning. Well, I'll come and have a look at it for you. Oh, cheers. It'll thanks. have to be tonight, though. I'm, uh, I'm booked up solidly in the days for the next fortnight. Oh, well, don't kick it. I wasn't. I wasn't. Oh. Uh, hello, oh, Derek. Mr. Baldwin. Oh, hi. Yeah. Right, well, uh, I'll see you later, all right? So, how are we then? Well, I don't know how you are, but I'm all right. Oh, good, good. Um, may I say how sorry I was to hear about you and Rita? Oh, yes. So, about the wedding arrangements. What about them? Well, I take it you are still available to do the honours for me? Why, has Rita stepped down, then? <laughs> Hardly, no. Well, that's it, then. End of story. Not necessarily, surely. Oh? Well, what I mean is, well, these tiffs do blow up from time to time, you know, in the best of households. I mean, for goodness sake, even, even Mavis and I have had our little differences over the years. Yes, but me and Rita are not you and Mavis, are we? And believe me, Derek, no one is more grateful for that than me. Well, there's no need to be rude. I think there is, Derek, because it seems to me the only way to get through to you. Well... If that's the way you feel about it, then I suppose there's no more to be said. Well, at least we agree on that. Right. Uh. <coughs> Do you find something amusing? Hey, me. Come on. <laughs> Making some coffee. Do you want some? Why not, love? So, just passing, were we? Good Lord, no. But if you want to tell me to bog off and mind my own business, feel free. But then again, if you were looking for a shoulder to cry on, I just happen to have at least two going spare just at present. I don't know what to do, love. Honest to God, I don't. So, it's not all over just yet. Not as far as I'm concerned. Far from it. Well, then you know what to do, don't you? Like, for starters, getting yourself round to that yard, throwing your arms round him and telling him just that. It's not as simple as that. Well, I'm sure I don't see why not. Who cares who makes the first move, as long as somebody does? He's got somebody else. Oh. I see. How long's that been going on? I don't know. Months, probably. Well, he certainly kept that quiet. Certainly from me, at any rate. But even so, you still want him back, is that what you're saying? I suppose I am, yeah. And have you told him that? Oh, yeah. He still moved in with her, though. At least that's what I reckon. So? 
As far as he's concerned, it is all over then. Well, give me keys back, whatever that means. Well, well. Not daft, is he, your lovely Alan? What do you mean? What I mean is, love, according to Mike Baldwin, who was down there this afternoon, this little domestic upset of yours certainly hasn't put him off his stroke at work. In fact, things are really buzzing down at that yard of yours just at present. In fact, in a way, I suppose we've got to hand it to him, really. He might have walked out on you, love, but he weren't stupid enough to walk out on the business as well, eh? I love these ice buns. I really do. Oh, it is you, is it? I thought I'd recognise your voice. So what's your problem, then? What have you been saying about me behind my back? Me? Well, it must have been you. Who else could it have been? I'm the foggiest idea what you're talking about, woman. Oh, of course you haven't. But when I do find out, you'd better put your head down because there'll be fur and feathers flying round here. Hey, and don't you call me woman. I'm not one of your nappy girls. You know, if that woman's right in the head, I don't want to be. Hiya. Hi. Hold on. Yep, just about. Hey, listen, I've been thinking. Oh, yeah? Well, wouldn't it make more sense for me to take the bike home with me? Why? Well, if I took it home with me, then I could keep it clean, couldn't I? Gina, if you're all that bothered about keeping it clean, you can do it here on the premises. In fact, I tell you what, you can take it round the back right now and I'll bring you a cloth, all right? Yeah, thanks a bunch. Is Mrs. Pearson, please? Phyllis? Oh, there you are, Arnold. Yes, here I am. What the Arnold was up with you this afternoon, dashing off like that? I prefer not to go into that, thank you, if you don't mind. Oh, would you? I've something to say to you. What about? About you, of course, and him. Who? Sugged in. What about him? I just want you to know that's all. I'm on to you. On to us? Oh, I know I'm just a pawn in this love game that you two play. But are you thinking that I can be used to inflame his flagging passion for you? Guess what? You've got another thing coming. No, no, I've just got to call him something on the way back. Okay. See you. Fine. That where I wear it. I don't think that's any of your business. But this is my business, right? What? This. The yard. The premises. In fact, the entire bit. What are you trying to tell me, Rita? Because I'm in a bit of a hurry, you know. Well, what I'm trying to tell you is this. I want you out of here. Now, hang on a minute. No, no. I'm not arguing with you. This is my yard left to me by my husband, and I want it back. Oh, and while we're on about it, there's something else I want back and all. The 6,000 quid I lent you. All right. Up next on Plus, it's a family affair as the soap hour continues with Emmerdale.